Welcome to Art Bell Somewhere in Time. Tonight featuring Coast to Coast AM from February 13th, 1993. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. James S. Templar is my guest. He's president of the International Guild of Occult Sciences College and Research Society. And we're into some pretty strange stuff. We're talking about magic. He says it's real. Witchcraft is real. UFOs are real. Abductions are real. And there's a lot more. And uh, I'm going to open the lines this hour. Mr. Templer will take questions uh, about anything in the world of the occult. This is going to be something. Again, I serve up the warning that if you are frightened by this kind of material or unduly disturbed by it, turn your radio off. In other words, don't listen. Now... Um, uh, we'll get back to it and uh, into the phone lines in just a moment. All right. Here we go. If you're ready... Uh, back to Palm Springs, California. And by the way, Mr. Templar, are you there? Yep. Um, we have an affiliate uh, right there in, in uh, Palm Springs, KPSI. I wonder if you're aware of that. Yes, I am. I recently picked up your show. That's correct. Glad to be on in Palm Springs. All right. Uh, is the answer man ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Templar, here we go. On the first time caller line, you're on the air coast to coast AM with uh, James S. Templar and Art Bell. Hello, Art? Yes, sir. Turn your radio um, off, please. There you is now completely on. All right. You are a first-time caller? Send caller from Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, wonderful. Uh, Mr. Templer's listening. Go ahead. Okay. I want to know how you tie the relationship uh, between the UFOs, the uh, extraterrestrials, and the spiritual beings which you believe to exist everywhere around us. Well, it seems like, as I said, they act just like demonic forces. Streeper mentions that he thinks they may actually be on this plane and come somewhere from inside this earth. And uh, so they act just like spirits with the way that they psychically put someone to sleep and uh, go walk through walls. So there may be a connection here. Uh, maybe demonic entities actually come from alien uh, sources. Mm. Um. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, not really, because I don't. I just don't imagine alien sources as being demonic. Um, all right. I, I suppose then I would require of you an attempt, at least, to answer why. In other words, why is it not as possible they are as as not? Because uh, I believe there is a, a, a boundary between the real world and the spiritual world, and I think that. If uh, extraterrestrials exist, they exist in the real world, and uh, in the spiritual world, uh, they can have what they want, and that's where you go when you're not around here anymore. Well, there's good and bad of these, of course, so we're, we're not really sure of, of, of any of this. Uh, the research has to be done, but, um, you know, we can write that on your tombstone when these negative aliens uh, attack this planet, that uh, you didn't think they were real, but... Uh, there's some very bad things going on here, and, of course, nothing can be totally explained as of this point. All right. Thank you. Thank you, caller, and uh, good morning. Write that on your tombstone after they attack? <laughs> is that, is that, that is what you said, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. You believe uh, the attack, uh, alien attack, is coming on this planet? I, we believe so in the next ten years. Something's going to happen. Well, something is not the same as they're going to attack us or take us over Something like that. Well, the so. government has a lot of different, uh, very high-tech weapons to handle these. So there could be either mass destructions or some sort of armistice. But there's going to be communication and there's going to be some bloodletting. If it, if it came to war, Mr. Templar, would we win? I really don't know. We have some amazing weapons that we don't know about. We, I guess we better have. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wild Card Line 3, you're on the air. Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell and James Templar. Good morning. Good morning. Where, where are you calling from, sir? Albuquerque. Albuquerque, New Mexico, okay. I was wondering if this argon generator is being suppressed by the United States government. I understand the inventor, Mr. Reich, R-E-I-C-H, was held in prison 12 years. That's 
uh, that is correct. Of course, uh, anything to do with medical mafia out there, and you try and heal anybody, uh, alternate methods, uh, and that's what they, he was using different, uh, using this uh, energy to heal people, and they uh, put him in jail as a quack, and he um, was persecuted because of this. And uh, while the, uh, the, his books have still survived and are readily available, uh, generally these devices are not used uh, by anyone anymore except for as experimental. Uh... Uh, I'm a layman, and I'll, the only thing I know about argon is it's a gas in physics. Well, actually, it's an energy, and it's, uh, it's, it's earth energies, and there's ways of... It's very simply... His devices are very simple. They're just uh, steel... Uh, in between uh, a fabric, and you put these different layers of steel together, and it kind of holds this energy in, and so hmm. forth. Uh, it's uh, you know. It's, Why would the government suppress it? Well, they suppress anything that upsets the normal. And, oh. uh, if it's very good, thank you. All right, thank you very much for the call, Albuquerque. Um, why? In other words, if there is, for example, a, a magical machine. Uh, or not so magical machine um, that will heal somebody of some disease the government otherwise can't deal with. Why would they suppress it, uh, Mr. Well, they, you know, there are cures right now for all the diseases that are on this planet, and they've been doing. None of this stuff is overly new, and it's suppressed because there's very little money, and the people that have the power don't want to give money if there is money to be made for it from someone else that has an alternative uh, philosophy or a uh, technique. Mm -hmm. It's like people that want to convert from the oil cartels into solar energies and uh, so forth. Because, uh, the old carburetor, we bought it up and put it on the shelf theory, right? Uh, basically, this has been true. People are either uh, paid off or they're killed. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, Line 1. You're on the air, Coast to Coast AM with Art Bone, James Templer. Uh, yeah, first of all, let me say good evening uh, to your guest. Um, I do have a problem. Uh, I just have to say I disagree with about 50% of the things that you say. What uh, fascinates me, though, is um, you believe that uh, people have a set purpose in life. I'm fascinated that because uh, if you look at U.S. history, it's fascinating that uh, great people come at key times, such as uh, Abraham Lincoln during the uh, Civil War, great leaders we had uh, during the, uh, uh, put the Constitution together, uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, do you believe that, that there are people... Uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, sir. That, that would be great people of both political persuasions. Uh, well... <laughs> uh, Mr. Templar, that is a fact, though. Yeah, it's uh, into the whole question of destiny and so forth. And there are people that have specific destinies. Now, not everyone has a, a destiny, but there are specific individuals that do have destiny. There is a fate, and they are going to do that fate regardless. Uh, are, you, are you saying that uh, people do not have a set, set time to... Uh, to uh, live and to uh, to die, that that is not a, a set point? No, it isn't. Uh, but there are people, that, well, some people have a destiny. As I said, some people may have this set time and uh, that they come for a specific purpose. They have a specific purpose on this earth. And they are in pretty much their life, while there are many stops in between, has a certain uh, outcome that will happen. But not everyone. Well, you say, well what you're saying, though, is that if it worked out that way, where you had, if you, you see, if you set it for some people and didn't set it for everyone, you basically have loose cannons. And uh, it seems to me, if if it's set for some people, it would have to be set for everyone. Well, no, because uh, there's only certain people that can do certain things. If everybody had this great goal in life to change the world, uh, you know, there would be uh, billions of people trying to do things in conflict. There's All right. Lots. All right. Thank you very much, caller, uh, Mr. Templer. Are our lives prescripted? Uh, do we have free will or do we just think we have free will? In other words, are we following some grand plan uh, and, and, and it's all, it's going to happen. It's just we don't know what's going to happen, so we think we've got free will, but we're really following some grand plan. Again, it's dependent upon the individual. Some people are just uh, flow in the wind is what I, and are taken by whatever comes along. Other ones are very much directed, and you're going to end up doing what you are directed to, whether you like it or not. So, again, it's very individualistic. <laughs> people have certain goals in life that they have to fulfill for certain reasons. Uh, hmm. Uh, that's that's really something to consider. All right. Uh, very good. Wildcard Line 3, you're on the air. Coast to Coast AM with James Templer. Okay. Yes, turn your radio off, please. Okay. Off, sir. Hello? Hello? Yes, where are you calling from? Seattle. Seattle, Washington. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, did you ever, um, you familiar with the book by uh, James Monroe, Out of the Body Journey? 
Uh, I've heard of it, but you're talking astral travel in general is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. well, I just wanted to make an observation that uh, he had several experiences of uh, premonitions of the future and, and uh, verified that a lot of them happened. One of them was uh, he had this vision where um, he and his family were uh, exiting a large city. He thought it was New York, and um, it was like a major exit. It was a whole bunch of people, and he said that he saw that the sky was like filled with these um, extraterrestrials that were like attacking the city. And that was a very interesting book. I just. I just thought that I'd, I'd mention this, you know. Uh, all right, let's see what he has to say. You're, are you at all familiar with the book? Uh, I've heard of the book. I've not read about it. I'm familiar with the writer. Um, now, these seeing things in dreams and, and so forth is very, very common. I mean, you just mentioned one where you saw... Uh, uh, I was fully conscious when that happened. Hmm? And you can do it fully conscious also. You know, it depends. Uh, some people, most of the time, people see dreams, which is the typical way of doing it because they're in a consciousness state. But uh, this is not unusual at all. And there's certain people under pressure situations in particular tend to dream of the future and get bits and pieces. It's very hard to put these together. When I said, Mr. Templer, that I, I really had this experience, I really had it. I have never felt it since, and I've never felt it before. But there was no question about it. I knew what was going to happen. In fact, I was be being forced by something or somebody to pay attention. I'm forced. I, it was as though I could not control it. It came in waves. All right, to Seattle, Washington, on the first time caller line, you're on the air. Good morning. Morning. An enjoyable show so far. Thank you. And uh, to Mr. Templer, uh, on, earlier you mentioned the possibility of a connection between uh, some of these UFO aliens and esoteric uh, beings that have been encountered. I was wondering if you were aware of... Uh, Alistair Crowley's work with Enochian beings. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that uh, text and so forth. He uses uh, supposed to be angelic type forces. Again, yeah, there's an intermixing here that can't be ignored, and we just have to uh, further investigate it. Yes, well, Crowley once drew, drew a picture of one of these Enochian beings that he summoned, and the picture looks just like the cover of Whitley Strieber's book, Communion. I've got a bust in here, uh, right. I, 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 if you don't mind. Uh... For the audience, what in the world are these beings, please? You've got to recall, we don't understand, we all don't understand what you're talking about. It. So, Enochi, uh, okay, Enochian beings are a class of angelic being which could theoretically be contacted by using uh, certain magical rituals in a magical language that was discovered by John Dee, an Elizabethan magician. Do you mean, do you mean angels? Yes, they are. They're a type of angels, some are. Uh, yes, but uh, Aleister Crowley, who was a magician in the early part of the 20th century, uh, drew pictures of these beings that he summoned, and they look just like these gray aliens that everyone is reporting that are doing mm. the abductions. There's uh, a lot of uh, pictures and drawings of demons that have come to people over the years that look very similar to these alien beings. Uh, this is a connection that has never been uh, really discussed before, and it's, it's fascinating. Hmm. Thank you very much, caller. And good morning. Uh, James, when all is said and done, and all of this is, is over, uh, and we finally know the truth someday, it, it, would it be your best guess that we're going to say, aha, uh -huh, we thought these were human souls from beyond, they're not, it's aliens. Or do you think we will finally discount the alien aspect of it and say, uh, what a foolish thought, uh, we're the only ones here, and in fact, uh, this is all manifestations of uh, human souls. Uh, I tend to think that these are forces from uh, outside of this planet. You do. Uh, and that's after having investigated uh, quite some number of these things, I take it. Uh, yes, it tends to seem like if uh, these entities are here, that they did not originate from this plane. In dealing with everything that you've dealt with... Uh, Mr. Templer, what would you say would be the moment that most frightened you? Well, when you come face to face with a demonic entity, this is very scary. Uh, and either you don't, you're not equipped in any of your life to how to really deal with these. I mean, you have old texts and uh, techniques that have been told to you, but you really don't know if these are going to work and they're going to uh, literally rip you apart. What do they do? I mean, do they spit 
split pea soup at you? <laughs> or, what, uh, or, or do they burn you? Or do they... What's liable to happen? Depends on the type of it, but they can actually uh, physically attack you, hit you, scrape you, uh, just like any other type of uh, person could do to you. They can uh, enter your body and drive you insane, where you actually kill yourself. They can go into your immune system. Uh, they can have things fall on you. There's, there's an... There's, they can manifest in many ways, but uh, generally they can uh, they can actually go into your mind and drive you insane. How can you tell if somebody is possessed? Well, there are some characteristics that are very similar. The, the problem is is that uh, uh, it's very difficult to know if someone's just uh, mentally unstable or if it's for some demonic reason. All right, tell me, what percentage of the people in mental hospitals you think are actually possessed? People have this exorcist vision of this, so you must understand there are degrees of this. But I would say that... Um, 90% uh, of the people in there have some sort of uh, negative energies or entities within them. And that's because uh, if you indulge in drugs, alcohol, and promiscuous sex, and so forth, you tend to draw in negative energies. And these pierce you to certain degrees and enter your consciousness. And uh, they can rule you or not. Um, <laughs> on the, uh, the facts that you sent me in the small print at the top left, one of the things that you deal in, apparently, is something called sexual sorcery. What is that? Well, sex in general has been used uh, for many hundreds of years, and it's well known in India and so forth, is actually channeling. You're channeling your, your sexual energies uh, for a materialistic or practical purpose, and uh, you have all these energies running around, and sex is a very mm. powerful energy, and you can actually use this energy and project it for a material goal. All right, uh, let me try it from this point of view. Can you get me Connie Chung? <laughs> I can't see... If you know Connie Chung, you can affect her. If you don't know her, you can't bring in Madonna or win the lottery. You know, these are the type of things that is the whole uh, fallacy going around about magic. Well, give give Madonna to somebody else. <laughs> um, all right, very good. Uh, back to, back to the telephones uh, quickly. Good morning. Uh, you're on the air with James Templar in Las Vegas. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Mr. Templar, do you think that the uh, world government is perhaps corroborating with the aliens and using mind-altering drugs? Uh, Supercomputers, uh, cathode rays, sound emitters, and other existing technology uh, to shape the world views? Well, the, they are definitely communicating with the aliens. How much manipulating is going on, I, I really don't know. But there is a lot of manipulating going on, period. How much of these actual technologies you're talking about are being used. Uh, there tends to be everything going on, but to what extent, I have uh, really no idea. Yeah, I was kind of curious about that. Thank you. Thank you very much for the... Oh, caller, where are you calling from? Oh, Reno, Nevada. Reno and uh, KOH, our affiliate KOH in Reno. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, you're an interesting person, Mr. Templar. How long have you been uh, studying all of this? Well, I've been studying this for about 20 years myself. Uh, and, of course, uh, I have, I'm in communication with people all around the world that are feeding me information. And uh, Why? Why did you begin to study it? Uh, you know, you, again, this tends to, I think it's a destiny factor. I think it's just what I was supposed to do, and I was just led into it. It's, it's fascinating, and uh, uh, we've depowered ourselves so much in this society that this is one way of bringing back the power to you. But you must have had some brush with it or some uh, exposure to all this that led you into it. Well, I've had a lot of uh, precognitions and a lot of psychic uh, visions and so forth, uh, particularly during sleep cycles. And Is your own psychic power strong, Mr. Templer? Yes, I'm what you call an adept at uh, magic, and I'm, I'm not a psychic, as you would call it, but I know how to direct some powers and uh, how to manipulate them. So you are adept at magic, that's the way you'd put it? Yes. But uh, uh, you, even using all that adeptness, you cannot get me Connie Chung. No, again, it's out of your sphere of influence. Uh, yeah, all right. Hold on just one second. This is Premier Networks. That was Art Bell hosting Coast to Coast AM on this Somewhere in Time.
You're listening to Art Bell Somewhere in Time. Tonight featuring Coast to Coast AM from February 13, 1993. Well, good morning from the great American Southwest. Uh, and I've got a brief story that I, I want to tell all of you. And this is a true story. And I want to tell Mr. Templar at the same moment. Uh, Mr. Templar, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Brief story. This is a true story. Um, there is a person who called one of our network executives the other day, deadly serious, literate, uh, not a nutcase, uh, said, I have been listening to Art Bell for the last seven years. The man doing that radio show right now is not Art Bell. And uh, he, uh, no, I'm, he was very, very serious, according to this network exec. Um, uh, and, and the executive asked, well... Um, is it that his opinions have changed? And he said, well, no. Well, has his voice changed? Well, no. Uh, so in every way that he was able to ask, he'd never seen a picture of me, so he couldn't uh, do anything with that. But he was convinced, certain, absolutely certain, that it was not and is not me. Well, maybe the aliens have made a clone of you, Art, and you're, they're standing in for you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, this is the kind of nonsense, obviously, uh, that is perpetrated out there. Now, you know, these are just silly, and this is the kind of uh, debunking we like to do also. Of those things that you have investigated, uh, claims of ghosts, uh, witchcraft, sorcery, magic, people who have claimed to have uh, psychic powers and so forth, what percentage over all these years have you found to be a bunch of absolute baloney? Well, there's, there's so much uh, misinformation, not only from non-occult people, but uh, people in the occult, because they, 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 they study only one little area, and they have only information coming in from one little area. We have information coming from around the world. We study everything. And uh, generally, there's a good 30% of uh, what people think are uh, metaphysical things happening that, that are not. So that means a lot of people forking up money to talk to spirits, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are talking to frauds. That's correct, and there's a lot of that going on and some of these people are very well meaning and they actually think they are channeling in something and they aren't they're deluding themselves well, this well, is the well, problem with anybody who gets in these areas is that they may be very honest but they're just deluding themselves why should i believe you're in the 70 percentile group um well again you know none of this can be proved but my my philosophy is nothing can be proved anyway we don't know what the common cold or acne is so <laughs> um, all right uh to the first time caller line you're on the air uh, coast to coast am with james templer where are you calling from please Tacoma. Tacoma, Washington. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Art? I haven't heard your voice in about three years. Uh, it's it's been a while, I, I guess. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome back. Glad you're here. Uh, you're going to have to speak up good and loud. You're a little weak there, so ask your question, sir. Okay, I'm just curious. Since since they're convinced that I'm having trouble, I can't. I, I can barely hear him myself, uh, but I'll relay it. So go ahead, ask your question there in Washington. Okay, since he's convinced that that the the occult is real. How come no one's ever been able to claim the prize that James Randi offers? All right, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, uh, the question is, since you claim the occult is real, though you do offer up that there's no absolute proof, why has nobody been able to claim the James Randi or the Randi prize? Well, what one... First of all, these things tested under the uh, conditions that he asked. Uh, many of these things can't be proven, uh, and it's very, very difficult to put somebody on the spot and have them function this way. But uh, from what I understand, there's somebody actually suing Randy, and he hasn't come through with his money. And, of course, you know, no matter what you tell Randy, he's going to come up with some sort of uh, lame excuse of what has happened or not happened. So, uh, hmm. uh, I take it uh, you, you find him uh, sort of an annoying burr. Well, he doesn't believe in anything, and uh, I think he's living in a uh, his own little capsule. Have you ever considered throwing a little negative energy or... Well, I guess I better not ask that. Um, uh, line two, you're on the air, Coast to Coast AM with James Templar. Morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask Mr. Templar a question. And, uh, Mr. Templar, you said that nothing can be proven for sure. Is that correct? Well, generally, yeah. I believe that in the scientific realm also. Okay. Then what makes you so sure that these spirits that are still lingering here are lingering here because they died violent deaths or they weren't ready to die? Well, again, most of these spirits will tell you that. and you can do. Oh, did research. they tell you that? Yes. They, they, you, can, you can do research of what happened. You can get physical appearances of people that actually lived in those houses and research back. And uh, there are communicative levels that you actually communicate with them. Oh, I see. You can just ask them these questions and they answer them. Uh -huh. Okay, and these angels you call on, that you're able to call on, they're not heavenly angels, are they? Well, the, 
you know, there's there's good and bad energies. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by heavenly. Yeah, a lot of people in magic and the uh, and the witchcraft in general do use uh, Christian uh, entities. Okay, well, the Bible uh, says different. The Bible says different, and um, it sounds to me like you're you're you believe in new, the New Age movement with the channeling, the imagery, the uh, aura. That is New Age language. Well, you know, these things, you know, the aura is in the Bible, all these things in the Bible, which basically is no, taken no, from all pagan sources. The Bible has no credibility whatsoever. I mean, you know, if you've done any research into that text, you'll find out that it's been taken from the Egyptians and from the pagans. You know, there are six deities born on December 25th. Did you I know that, pardon? including Buddha? I beg your pardon? Do you know that there are six God forms that are born on the December 26th? Well, see, that's uh, why we celebrate uh, Jesus' birthday on that. We wanted to knock out the pagan holidays, and that's what we did. Well, I mean, then you Christians should, because you've stolen every single pagan holiday that there is and named it for yourself, including building your temples on pagan God ground. said to conquer and occupy, and that's what we're doing. So we conquered their holidays, and we're occupying them. Yes, you're very peaceful, loving people. Yes, we are. Yeah, I noticed that. But you certainly aren't anywhere near a Christian, you are definitely from the other side. Well, that's your opinion. Why don't you go out and kill some more pagans and show what you Christians have done over the last uh, 2,000 years of the occupation? Well, you know what, Mr. Templer? There's been more murder in the na name of atheism in the last 50 years. That's nonsense. Oh, no, it is? What about Stalin and Hitler? How many did they kill together? Yeah, Hitler considered himself a Christian. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He certainly did. He considered himself getting the Holy Grail and everything else was just hooked up to Christianity. Anybody can say that. I could say that I'm the Queen of Sheba. That doesn't make me the Queen of Sheba. Well, you know, the bottom line with any thought form but or anything. You're in the you New have. Age movement. Yes, I've heard you mention God, imagery, aura, reincarnation, and what you people do in the in the New Age movement is try to mesh that together with Christianity. No, I don't. I don't. But I don't think Bible, people should deal with Christianity totally. at all. I, thought, I beg your pardon? I don't think people should deal with Christianity at all. It's infected But people. you did mention you believed in God. I believe in a God form, yes. A God form. Uh -huh. See, okay, that, then, but you do try to... Actually, ma'am, I believe I asked him earlier if he believed in a creator, and he said yes. Oh, who, who does he think the creator is? Good question. What about it, Mr. Templer? Well, it isn't a 2,000-year-old uh, belief system. I mean, some of these belief systems go back to Atlantis and 50, uh, you know, 50... 50,000 years, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, a little new religion that it only is a really small part of the part You're of not the, answering uh, the population. Question. I'm waiting, too. Who is the creator, Mr. Templer? Well, it's, it's, again, it's an energy. It's a force that, you know, no one really ultimately knows what these are. The creator is, uh, I don't have names for it. I think it's kind of silly that well, a I human think you should have really your authority they, in the, on the subject. Well, to think a human can understand what a creator is and exactly how it works, I think, is quite silly. All right, ma'am, I'm going to uh, stop it right there, but uh, you've been a good call. Thank you. Okay. Right. Uh, well, there you go. There's your first, Mr. Templer. Um, fascinating. Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, back to it. Good morning. You're on the air coast to coast AM with James Templar in Las Vegas. Where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Seattle. Seattle. Hi. Again, KVI. Big time this morning. All right, sir, go ahead. Yeah, am I the only person in the world that thinks the crop circles are nothing but hoaxes? Crop circles, good question. Well, again, you know, they uh, they tried to, I'm sure, government-sponsored. They came up with two uh, drunken guys of a pub in England and had them make a little crop circle. But, I mean, there's hundreds of circles that pop up overnight. There's no way anybody could do it unless there was an army out there. And if there was an army out there, then there would be all sorts of signs of it. So these things are very mysterious. Okay, what about the mutilations, like the cows and stuff? Again, these are very mysterious. They're perfect cuts, uh, things that can't be done very easily. And uh, definitely seems like there's no tracks around it, and uh, you know it, it, they're very mysterious again. Would would you say with uh, either the occult or some aliens, and what po possible use could the aliens have for you know mutilating animals? Well, again, they're using this uh, you know this genetic material, and um, they seem to have some uh, initial experimentations with it is the only thing we can come up with. I, I, there's, there's no occultists doing this for any particular reason to use body or, you know, animal organs and so forth. It's, uh, um, 
I think that's all a bunch of silliness. We're, what's exactly happening? Again, these things are just, uh, we have pointers. All right, sir. Thank you very much for the call, Seattle. Mr. Templar, uh, even here in Las Vegas, I am sorry to have to say, up on the side of uh, a mountain here, in uh, over, towers over the town, they have found signs of ritual taking place, uh, occult, uh, satanic rituals, uh, signs of sacrifice, the candles, the paraphernalia. It's going on around here. It seems to be going on around everywhere. What What is that, please? Okay, yeah, this whole, uh, you know, there's a small group of people that are doing negative practices out there, and uh, it's totally overblown by the media, yet uh, I haven't seen a Satanist on television that's stealing money from people to build condominiums or is getting involved in hookers like Swagger did. I mean, uh, it's a very small portion, and these people ought to be watched and prosecuted if they're doing any of these. I know, but Swagger's fall from grace, uh, Mr. Templar, does not... Uh... Uh, uh, diminish uh, in in any way for most Christians uh, their belief system. I mean, it is a fallen man. Men are but men. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, every day I see molesting from priests and ministers in the paper constantly. I think we ought to be watching where the real trouble is and not let uh, the... Uh, fair, uh, fair enough, Mr. Templer, but it sounds as though you've got it out for Christians, and I'm going to some degree uh, uh, defend them. You hear about it because it is the uncommon, not the common. Well, you know, they attack everybody, and if it's something that makes you happy, fine, go for it. But basically, Satanism and animal sacrifice go back to Christianity. It has nothing to do with occultism. <laughs> All right. Drink uh... blood and eat the flesh in their ceremonies. Baptists drink a glass of grape juice. Now, if I was to tell somebody in my magazine that you ought to do a symbolic ritual of eating flesh and drinking blood, I'd be late, uh, labeled as a Satanist and be hunted down. Yet the uh, Catholics do this every day. On the first time caller line, you're on the air with... Uh... James Templar in uh, Palm Springs. Good morning. Uh, Art, I just got one thing to say. No, you don't, because you can't call on that line. Wild card line three, you're on the air. Good morning. Oh, hello? Hello. Turn your radio off, please. I've got it off. Tell us where you're calling from. Um, I'm calling from California. All right. Uh, you're on the air with Mr. Templar. just wanted to ask Mr. Templar... If I can get any more information on his society, I'm very interested in it. Oh, don't you know we're going to give you some information. Uh, Mr. Templer, what does your society, uh, if somebody like this lady uh, writes to you or calls, uh, whatever it is you allow, uh, what might you send her to inform her? Well, we're happy to send out some uh, free information on the organization. We have an 800 number you can call after the show, which is 800 395 Four four six seven, and whoever's interested will send out some free information on the organization. Yeah, I lived in India quite a while and got very familiar with their magic. Uh, when is that phone line open, please, Mr. Temple? Uh, that will be open after, right after the show, whenever we, I'm um, assuming, after 6 o'clock. I mean, is it normally open 24 hours? or? Uh, yes, there's a tape on there, and the normal times generally uh, any time after uh, the best bet. Uh, well, we'll call you back if you leave a message. All right, well, there you go, ma'am. Uh, and you were mentioning India. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so while I was in India, I uh, saw some instances of their magic, and I am a firm believer in it. And I've been trying to get information wherever I go. At one time, my life was saved through something like this. I was in danger, and my father and a guest staying with us and our night security men had me, heard, heard me screaming for help when I hadn't screamed at all. I, did, I wasn't even aware I was in danger. Uh -huh. What we're saying is that there's all sorts of mysterious powers out there, and to overlook them, that could possibly be some help for yourself or for society, that is, it is foolish. We need, at this time, when society is in such decay, we need to look for alternatives and, and uh, use them. And it's, uh, these things have been around for a long time, and uh, they shouldn't be ignored. And, you know, you were talking about magic can kill. We saw an incident off it, a perfectly healthy man killed by magic. In what manner, please, ma'am? showed up at our house one day and asked my father to take care of his wife and children because he was going to die. And my father says, look, you're a perfectly healthy 32-year-old. And he says, Sahib, you don't understand. He says, I have been wished to death. So we sent him to the hospital. We had physical done. We had him hypnotized. We did everything. On the day he said he was going to die, he sat down in the middle of the road and said, my time has come and he was dead. Well, did a truck hit him? No, nothing. He died. Just died. So we had asked his relatives if we could have an autopsy done. There was no reason at all for this man to die. He was a perfectly healthy, uh, approximately 32-year-old. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, Mr. Templer, there are many times when people die without discernible cause. Uh, many times, even despite an autopsy, they are simply unable to discover the cause of death. 
Have a lot of those people been killed by magic? Well, I don't know the why. It's not easy to kill somebody with magic. Let's get that right off. It does happen, but it's it's not something that you uh, that is easily obtained or easily done. So um, again, uh, we really don't know how many of these actually happen. There's some very mysterious deaths, and there's things that have been linked to people being quote cursed. All right, I joke about it, have joked about it on the show. But suppose a whole bunch of people with great psychic power were to get together and try and figure out a way to psychically burst a blood vessel in the temple of Saddam Hussein. Could that be done? Again, uh, yes, generally here. The problem is is a sphere of influence problem here again, because if you can do that as a group, you're changing the entire planet, and there are spirit guides that won't allow this to happen. All right. First time caller line, you're on the air with James Templer in Las Vegas. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Fine. Where are you calling from, please? Uh, Tucson, Arizona. Okay, we don't have a lot of uh, time here, uh, but but go ahead. What is your question? Uh, perhaps just listening to your program, we would both agree that there's good and there's evil. Now, is there a possibility there's good e there's good aliens and bad aliens? All right, that's a good question, uh, Mr. Yeah. Taylor. The answer right. to that. There's definitely good aliens. The problem is, is they don't seem to be too interested in helping us. So uh, that's the only problem that uh, I can see. So the good aliens then are more or less indifferent to the, the, the human plight? Well, they seem to have this Star Trek mentality, is what I call it. They don't want to really interfere. The philosophy is, is that ultimately when push comes to shove, they will come to our aid. Wild Card Line 3, you're on the air uh, in Las Vegas uh, with Mr. Templar. Yes, yes. Um... I hope to uh, be intelligent when I say this. Uh, I'm a Christian, and uh, you mean you want to try to hold your temper? No, not at all. <laughs> I, uh, I just want to come across as intelligent. Uh, okay, good. Well, take a deep breath. Tell us where you're calling from. Uh, Marin County. All right, let her rip. Um, basically, I would I would say that if if what you're saying is true, then Jesus came and died for nothing. And uh, the Bible's a waste of time and that we should all just, you know, chuck it in and go fishing. Uh, the Bible tells us that we should test the spirits and uh, any spirit that denies that Jesus came in the flesh is not from God. Uh, I used to be uh, a believer in what you are uh, talking about now. And um, I found that... Uh, as a Christian, there are things called familiar spirits, and what they do is they imitate and act like people that have passed away, and the whole point is for them to deceive people like you uh, into believing that uh, they're somehow subject to you and somehow that you have you can do some good. They're All right, hold, caller, hold it right there. Mr. Templar, is it possible, indeed, that you have been deceived that what this caller believes is correct, and one day in the end you're going to find out uh, uh, that he's exactly uh, uh, exactly correct. Do you acknowledge that as a possibility, or are you surely certain that it is not so? Oh, I, I think it's uh, probably is, uh, is ridiculous. Uh, probably. More people are deceived on the other side. Uh, you know, if Christianity works for you, fine. Just don't force it down other people's uh, throat and persecute them. But you do acknowledge that he he could be right. No, I don't really acknowledge that. You know, and again, if you've done any kind of uh, research on the Bible, you really find where it's come from and how it's pieced together, etc. You know, if it works for you, fine. Uh, any comments, caller? Yeah, I, I would simply say that uh, who was Jesus, and uh, if he wasn't who he says he was, then he was an in he was an incredibly stupid and uh, and deluded man. And uh, why do people who don't who are not Christians uh, consider him to be? Uh, a wise and great man. Thank you. Um, who was Jesus, Mr. Templer? Well, again, I don't, I don't believe there was a Jesus. Uh, the Jewish writers at that time never mentioned Jesus. I believe there's only one comment of, 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 a, of a, quote, Jesus-type person uh, by the Romans who kept excellent uh, documentation. So uh, there doesn't really, really seem to be much evidence involved in any of this. Um. Why would you, with what documentation does exist, uh, which many would claim is substantial, of, of, uh, of the presence on earth of Jesus, consider that less likely than many of the things that you have investigated that, uh, in fact, uh, have much less documentation to support them? 
Well, you know, Christianity only uh, was was used and uh, propagated by the sword. They murdered people if you didn't believe in them, millions. And, uh, you know, that speaks for itself. People weren't converted from, quote, paganism because they wanted to. They were converted by the sword. Uh, Mr. Mr. Templer, if... Uh... I'll tell you what, I, I want to talk a little bit about witchcraft. The trip back in time continues with Art Bell hosting Coast to Coast AM. More Somewhere in Time coming up. Coast to Coast AM from February 13, 1993. We are in the nighttime, and this is an appropriate subject for the nighttime. It's pretty frightening stuff, some of it. Uh, magic. Magic, magic. Uh, witchcraft, which I'm about to inquire about. The occult. Ghosts. Things of that sort. James Templer, my guest, uh, president of the International Guild of Cold Sciences College and Research Society in Palm Springs. Hope you're buckled in. And we'll get back to him in just a moment. Now, back to James Templar. And uh, are you there, James? Yes, I am. Okay, your public awaits. Some of them with little knives and guns. Yes, James. Sir. <laughs> Remember, folks, our first time caller line slash east of the Mississippi River line is area code 702 385 7213. And uh, good morning on that line. You're on the air. I yep. am? Yes, you are. Where are you calling from? Uh, Seattle. 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 All right. Uh, well, you're on the air with Mr. Templer. Go ahead. I, um, you just kind of caught me by surprise that I got on so fast. Well, you have to imagine, sir, when you dial, you might get on. Okay. Well, I just wanted to know his, um, his view on uh, Carlos Castaneda's books. I think he's an excellent writer, and he gives you an excellent insight into a, uh, the magical tradition of, uh, of Mexico and, I believe, the ancient Aztecs he gets into some of that. They, they are fascinating, uh, fascinating books, and it gives you a whole insight into, uh, well, that's really shamanism. Mm -hmm. All right, caller. Thank you. Thank you. He got in quickly because that's our first time caller line, and you can only call it uh, one time, and then, uh, of course, you've got to shift over and become a second time caller and go in the mix. But uh, when you call that line, folks, you can get on rather quickly sometimes. Area code 702-385-7213. Let it ring until we answer. Wildcard line three, you're on the air in Las Vegas. Good morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Oddbell. Hi there. This is uh, from Barstow, California. Barstow, all right. The Barstow Triangle. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, I was uh, just uh, interested in uh, about dreams, you know, uh, if uh, Mr. Uh, Templer, uh, you know, has... Uh, I know he has some kind of understanding with these dreams. I'm just curious to know, because I do... I had a few dreams, especially he mentioned about uh, this uh, book about the man. There's something going on, the mass exodus in uh, New York City. Uh -huh. And I had a dream like that uh, a few months ago that I was driving into over the Varanzano Bridge and uh, I discovered this crazy. Oh, while I was going in, there was millions of people coming out and I didn't know what the heck was going on. And this uh, this brings back the memory, you know. I said, that's weird, you know. Uh -huh. And then I had another dream one time before this earthquake in uh, 7.6 we had here and uh, about... Uh, about three weeks before that, I dreamt that uh, there was a big earthquake here. I looked out the window, and and uh, I seen everything crumbling down. And my house wasn't going down. It was really weird. It was a dream. And then this actually happened. But uh, thank God there was no damage here, you know? Uh -huh. So I was just curious to know if there's any kind of connection with dreams. All right, I have a question for you, caller, just before he answers. If you were to dream tomorrow that there was a gigantic earthquake and you saw yourself being killed, uh, what would you do? What would I do? After having had your first experience, yeah, what would you do? 
take precautions. I don't know. Well, I, I said, now you saw yourself being killed. Would you would you wake up quickly and 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 leave uh, leave the state, get the hell out of the area? Would you actually, in other words, what I'm trying to find out is, would you act now, having seen it happen once? Would you act on your dream? I probably would, but my problem is I'm confined here because I got a an elderly mother, you know, and I'm stuck, you know. So I'm you... in a situation where I can't move. I wasn't being killed, actually. It was just a... No, no, I understand that. I was pushing it to the limit to see if you would act on, on what you believe to have happened to you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Templer, comments? Yes, dreams are very deceptive. You have to do it like any other discipline, and that means you have to uh, write down, see if they happen in your life, and follow it through. Most of the, most dreams are, are minds releasing, and it's a tension thing and so forth. There's not much credit you can give to dreams unless you're actually following them, seeing if things happen in your well, life. Well, yeah, without something flashing at the top of the dream saying, real dream, real dream. Right. Uh, how's one to discern the difference? I guess just practice? You can't discern the difference. The idea is there are techniques. We have a lot of different courses on all sorts of different things that you can uh, tell yourself. To, you know, you have to have a pen and pencil by your bed and uh, tell yourself subconsciously when you're going to sleep that you're going to remember your dream. And as soon as you have it, and if you wake up, you should write it down, make a, a whole little book out of it, and see exactly if it's just uh, your mind or there actually is something coming through. When I was a kid, I was convinced when my dad would turn the light off that there were, of course, like other kids, monsters in the closet, monsters under my bed, and you're telling me in a way there are monsters. Well, not, not, not really. What I'm saying is that uh, you have to learn how to discern what is real and not, and that comes from training and from learning. Uh, there's a lot of popular literature out about monsters, evil creatures, uh, genetic mutants, things from other planets uh, uh, that chew up, uh, defile human beings, uh, cut them up, uh, rip them to shreds, uh, that sort of thing. Do you think such a beast exists? Well, there's demonic forces, and some uh, very rarely do they come through and they actually physically hurt people. But, I mean, these are very rare instances. It does happen, though? It does on rare instances that there are actual physical ramifications. All right. Um, good morning. First time caller line. You're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Yes, I had a question for him. All right, where where are you calling from? Uh, Seattle. Seattle. Another All right. KVI. All right. Um, actually, I was wondering if these aliens are watching. How does Mr. Templer think that they will announce themselves to the "quote unquote" human race? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yes, Mr. Templer, uh, indeed. Thank you, caller. Uh, how? What form do you expect eventual contact, say, within ten years, to take? Well, I mean, they're in contact with the government already, to a large extent. Um, in terms of how the, uh, the regular populace will hear of them, I think it's just going to happen one day. They're just going to announce that they've been here, and the government's going to come out and uh, say that we've known this for a long time, but now we have to because there's some uh, major problem that may happen here. I suppose somebody will dub it Spacegate. <laughs> uh, Wildcard Line 3, you're on the air, uh, Coast to Coast AM, with Art Bell and James Templer. Good morning. Good morning, Art. Hi, where are you calling from, please? Salt Lake. Salt Lake City, uh, KTKK. Yes, uh, you have a question? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, two quick ones real fast. All right, I'm going to relay this because I doubt he can hear you. You're, you're not very strong, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the, the first one I wanted to ask him, or ask him to go on about here once I get off the phone is uh, his studies on what he's doing and how it relates to the martial arts. Uh, I believe that was mentioned during the introduction. And uh, second of all, um, I want to ask him a little bit about what I call preemies or premonitions. Uh, when you, you you don't, it's hard to explain, and maybe he can uh, get a better or explain it better than I can. Uh, when you get, you know something's going to happen, but it's not a little voice that tells you, and it's not. Uh, it's one of those things that are kind of hard to happen, but uh, if you become accustomed to them and act on them. Uh, a lot of times, I'd say 90% of the time, these things actually happen. All right, sir, we're going to have to hold it there, and I'm going to enlarge. Uh, we'll take his last one first. People, Mr. Templer, who have learned to act on their intuition, if you want to call it that, or premonition, if you want to call it that, they've learned to cultivate it and act on it. Are these the people in this world, Mr. Templer, who are successful and, ex and generally excel a bunch, or are seen to be unreasonably lucky and excel? 
Very, very much so. And if you notice, if you read any type of literature on people who are real successful investors and so forth, they tend to have this little voice talking to them, telling them to do this or do that. And they feel a, a common thing is the gut reaction. Oh, I feel it in my gut. And uh, most very successful people have went to put a heavy amount of emphasis on these areas of their lives. And we all have this. How many times have we reached for the phone and it rings? Or, you know, the stories are just endless of people that feel a relative dying. Yeah, it, actually, it goes both ways, not only in terms of the choices. Life is nothing but a, 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 you know, a constant stream of choices, left road or right road, which way do I go? So it's not just that, but it's also the negative. A lot of people will have bells ringing in their brain all over the place when they're walking into an area that's going to be trouble for them. Is, isn't that correct? That is correct, and a lot of people have saved their lives like that. How many times have you went into a place, whether it's a store or you're walking in a place in the dark, and you feel real negative energies from oh, it? Oh, yes. Real bad. Oh, yes. And these are, these are the warning signals that you get from your mind telling you something is going to happen. How many times have you uh, go out and uh, you, you lost your keys to your car, and it takes you two minutes to find it, and then all of a sudden you're driving down the road and there's an accident there that happened two minutes ago? These well, are all the type of the psychic tools that are not scary, they're not anything gray occult or hooked up into weird areas. These are forces that you should learn how to use so you can better your life. Mr. Templar, I actually do that. And uh, unfortunately, though, I must admit that more times than not, I've been in a position of saying, damn it, you know, I knew this was wrong. I knew I shouldn't have done this. I had the feeling, but like an idiot, I went ahead anyway. Uh, and, and well, So you're kicking yourself around. Well, if you do some basic little psychic trainings, these things, these type of messages will probably be affected to you uh, 80% of the time. <laughs> they could save your life. All right. Uh, indeed. Uh, line two, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer and Art Bell. Good morning. Good morning. Well, in the book of Revelation, it says uh, that there was war in heaven, and uh, Michael and his angels fought against uh, the dragon and his angels. And, that, and it also it says later in that... All right, so what is your point from that? What, is, what are you uh, trying in, to suggest? In Revelation chapter 12, it declares uh, that the planet Earth is being invaded by the devil himself uh -huh. and uh, and the demon spirit. So the, those are the bad aliens. All right, thank you. Is that something, uh, well, Mr. Templar, that you would regard as, as valid in the Bible? Well, you know, again, these are most of these stories are taken from other places, and there is some validity to that. I mean, it does. If you, you must remember, these uh -huh. are written in ancient times. They wouldn't describe. Mr. That. Templar, so, you're uh, fi wait a sec. You're finding convenient uh, in the Bible and naming is why there's something to that. You say, um, uh, where where it seems to support your case, but where it doesn't, you scoff. Well, no, you know, those stories are all through paganism. I mean, uh, the Nordic tradition of Ragnarok goes into all that, and it gives very much looks like a alien attack, and all these things have generally been taken from these sources. Well, okay, but again, I, I accuse thee of, uh, of, of finding convenient the passages of the degree, and you get my drift? Yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. It's you know, a very human thing to do, Mr. Templer. You know, if the Bible works for you, great. As I said, I'm not on a tirade against uh, Christianity. Uh, 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 well, I know there are going to be some that, that have heard it that way, and so uh, on their behalf, I thought I'd get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, to the telephones again, then. Uh, on the first time caller line, you're on the air. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Where, I, where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Oregon. Oregon, all right. I have uh, two comments and a question. All right. All right. Um, I've been in, involved with law enforcement now for about 16 years. And the type of uh, covens and witchcraft that uh, are being talked about are more widespread, I believe, than your guess would indicate. I've also had to uh, do some background and some studying on the subject. Um I wanted to say one thing about Mr. Crowley. He was described by your guest as a uh, as a witch. One thing that's not widely known, I guess, unless you can go into his background, is that the type of witchcraft he was involved in was, uh, and I won't get graphic, but it was uh, sadistic, it was sexual, it was, uh, as a matter of fact, it was so extreme that he lost a son. All right. Well, you're, we're really getting an awful lot of ground here to cover, sir. Hold on just my, a second. All right, that's my question. My question for him is this. He's talked about having success in dealing with these things. My question is, what does he do? 
Uh, what authority does he use when he comes up against this that finds himself able to prevail? All right. Thank you. Uh, and a good question it is, uh, uh, Mr. Well, by, by, by what authority do you challenge any of these beings or attempt to help anybody uh, free themselves of such a possession? Uh, Again, most people use uh, uh, traditions that they're involved in. Traditions means whatever belief system. Some people use Egyptian god form energy. You can use uh, Celtic. You can use Nordic. You use energy forms to combat them with, and they're very effective. Um, in terms of Crowley and so forth, uh, I have no use for Crowley. I don't like his magic. I don't like his writings or anything else. Uh, he has survived, and I have absolutely no use for him or his writings. And uh, in terms of satanic crime, you better start watching these ministers that are uh, molesting hundreds of children instead of uh, and the renegade. Uh... I know. We, we have, uh, in fact, there's a, a story about a priest molesting children who did it here in Las Vegas uh, back in the 60s, I think it was, and that's running in the news right now. So it does happen, but again, in defense of them, uh, the priesthood, that is, there are, uh, there are very few that do it, and when they do, it's a great big story. As far as I'm aware, there's never been one Satanist brought to trial that has been convicted of killing babies, doing all these things you hear about. You know, the Christians did this to the Jews when initially, and they accused them of being baby killers and everything else. And quite frankly, law enforcement is so ignorant in this uh, field that they can't really judge one thing from another. And so you're saying you really means nothing. You're I mean, saying they they see it then where it doesn't exist, or they imagine it where it does not exist. Uh, they see a little symbol and they don't really know what it means. You know, just like last night you were talking about the swastika and everything else, and that's a perverted uh, symbol that the American Indians have used. Uh, they use it in Tibet and everything else. Well, certainly, but they, no matter who used it well or, or drew it well, the Nazis ruined it. I would like to say we are watching. We find anybody involved in these practices. We do all we can to stop these people. Uh, we have no use for anybody doing that. We find animals extremely sacred, and actually, I feel they're higher species than the humans. And if uh, we catch anybody doing this, and we disseminate quality information, I don't, as we said, Crowley's... I understand. Uh, listen, if, um, if this were a few hundred years ago and we were in New England, would we be hearing about you getting warm toes soon? Uh, I'm sure it would. I mean, it killed enough of people, millions... All right, uh, line three, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Templer, as a second-generation uh, uh, abductee, I'd like to know what a connection could be with, uh, let's say, their little greys or small beans. Um, you're saying you have been abducted, or are you simply the offspring of someone who has? Oh, I have been abducted. You have been. As, as in my my parents also have. Um but what I'd like to know is, is um, with some more or less positive abductions, there's also some very, very negative ones. And I'd like to know if the entity that comes in while you're sleeping period periodically um, and would uh, um, attack you, pull off covers and, and, and do, you know, sexually attack you, are these also the greys? Uh, Ed, does he have any idea? Were you attacked in this manner? Yes, I was. Sexually attacked? Yes. Now, that, that's a pure demonic attack. That really has no connection to the aliens, uh, unless they're intertwined, which is what we're investigating. But that's a very typical uh, demonic attack. It is, huh? Mm, that's bad news. I didn't really want to hear that. I understand. Because uh, the greys came a lot. But then right in the middle, within like a week's time, this other thing came and I couldn't... Well, don't feel life. helpless and don't let the... A lot of these greys come in because they manipulate you and you've got to let them in. You fight these things. People are scared. Learn to get up your courage and fight these things. And the same thing with the demons. There are ways of fighting these entities. And that's the part of the message I'm trying to put out. Don't feel hopeless like all these UFO shows. You feel like you want to go out and commit suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is to challenge these things and to let them know that you're not going to be a, push, a pushover. Okay, well, you know, lately I have been doing that in the last couple of years, and I haven't been bothered. Uh, my kids haven't been bothered. No, I've, uh, I've stood up for it. And I'm, they're I'm cowards, and they don't like around. to be confronted, and they're not set up for battle, these greys. They're, the minute, they're like all sneak thieves. The minute they find uh, any kind of resistance, they tend to run for the hills. I've noticed that. I've noticed that. Okay. All right, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much for the call, and keep the covers up there around your chin. I will. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, Mr. Templer, fascinating. I saw a movie recently, which I've got in my collection. I collect movies, uh, which was entitled The Entity. 
And as I recall, uh, it was uh, a supposed true story or taken from events that were purported to be true, and it involved the sexual attack, the repeated sexual attack of a woman. Uh, it was very convincing. Uh, I believe at the end of the movie it suggested, though now infrequent, these attacks uh, continue to this very day, and it said where she was living. I think it may have been Arizona or something. What do you know about that? This is common. This is not a isolated incident. There are many of these demonic entities that uh, draw their energy through sexual uh, contact, and it's not unusual. Again, if, uh, if she knew where to go, those problems can be solved. Wow. Hold on just one moment. We'll be right back in this continuing saga. Uh, isn't this some morning? Isn't this some morning? We'll get back to it in just a moment. My guest is James Templar. This is Premier Networks. That was Art Bell hosting Coast to Coast AM on this Somewhere in Time. Take you back to the past on Art Bell Somewhere in Time. Oh, man. We're into one this morning. James Templar is here. He's uh, president of the International Guild of Occult Sciences College and Research Society. If you have questions, we have answers. Uh, Mr. Templar, are you there? Yes, I am. Are you a witch? Well, I don't consider myself a witch. Uh, most uh, people don't understand what uh, people that are called witch. Uh, most witches are from the Wicca tradition, which is a uh, pagan religion. It's a pagan religion with magical overtones. Basically, it's a religion, and they use some magical techniques. A pure witch would use magic techniques. And uh, I consider myself, I use different uh, magical techniques, but I really don't have a term for myself. How about warlock? Well, a warlock is a negative term. It, it generally means a liar or a deceiver. It's one of those uh, words that they've perverted like uh, sorcery uh, to mean different things. Sorcery, if you look it up in Webster's, means calling up demons. All it is is a French word that means spell. You know. All right. Uh, here we go again. First time caller line. You're on the air with James Templer and Art Bell in Las Vegas. Good morning. Yes, good morning. This is Patty O'Neill calling from Ogden, Utah. Yes, hi, Patty. Hi, I just want to make a comment. I have to agree with Mr. Templer. Uh, I am not a Christian. I went to Egypt. I was married in Egypt. And I think you have to look at the uh, fact that it has to do with cultural chauvinism. And it has to do with European and Anglo people um, forcing their particular philosophy on people of color all over the world. And that's the comment that I want to make. And that Americans need to do much more reading in terms of history of their country and other people's country, also in terms of religion. Any time a person is not uh, a Christian, they're considered somebody who's involved in satanic uh, worship. And these religions have been in existence many thousands of years before Christianity. Do you believe in magic, ma'am? Yes, I believe that it's, it's possible, and I believe that there's good and that there's, there is evil. But I believe that there's good and evil in, in the human heart. And I believe that racism and sexism and class elitism are things that we need to deal with if we're going to deal with anything. Not to say that other things do not exist. All right, very good. Thank you. Uh, what about that, uh, Mr. Templar? Racism, sexism, uh, those sorts of things sourced in the human being, influenced by what? No, I, I think that uh, she summed it up perfectly. I mean, that's exactly pretty much how we feel. And uh, you know, if it works for you and you're involved in it, go right ahead. But we have more pressing problems than to worry about uh, those things. We need to find alternatives to change this world before we do. Well, the wor you're right. The world is a mess. Lots of weapons, despite the disarmament talk and all the rest of it. Uh, uh, Mr. Templar, could, uh, that's what could, 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 could magic, could sorcery, could witchcraft, could all of these things, if uh, properly taken up by enough save the world yes and that's that's pretty much our message our message is to do something the regular uh sciences and everything we've used as of this point two thousand years of christianity have brought us to the mess we're in right now we need to look at alternatives and combine the best of everything into something to save this planet we're more diseased than we have ever been their food chain is is, is dying the planet is dying so we, we better do something and do it now are you an ecologist yes i am very strong 
Very strong. Uh, all right. Uh, on the first time caller line, you're on the air coast to coast AM with James Templar. Good morning. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, sir. Where are you calling from? Uh, Las Vegas. All right, go ahead. Um, I'm also a Christian. I have a question for Mr. Templar. Is, uh, I think he's wrong on his facts about the Christians and the, uh, and the, uh, the Christians didn't do the persecuting. The, actually, the pagans did. And, um, and what happened is in 300 A.D., King Constantine, who was a Roman citizen, merged uh, with the Christians, and uh, he made like a pact with Christianity. And in doing this, the persecution that was done was done by him trying to convert the other Christians into this new belief or this new uh, conversion that he had uh, in 300 A.D. That's what was going on there in uh so actually it was the case. Well, I mean, you can get into history ad infinitum here, and it's a long discussion. But right now we have a religious war going on in Yugoslavia, and it's the Christians the, uh, that are massacring the Muslims. There are, they estimate there's 50,000 women being raped. This is what Christianity is doing. Now, if you can't say that this is untrue, that's a religious war. Well, uh, you better talk to the Muslims to find out who was butchered and how many so-called witchcraft. Okay, but see, you're wrong on your facts, though, as far as the... Uh of what the Christians are doing because we weren't doing the persecuting. And, what are you doing in Yugoslavia right now? What is ethnic cleansing? Okay, uh, as far as that goes, I, I do not, I cannot comment on that because that's I, a typical Christian. All right, well, thank you. Uh, I, yeah, that he kind of tripped trim himself up there a bit. Um, it is true that in the name of religion or religious differences, there are wars that go on all over the world, Miss Templar, not just. Uh, initiated or uh, prosecuted by Christians, but by many faiths, right? Well, this is true, of course. As I said, everyone's guilty, and paganism was not the perfect religion either, and I don't, want to, I don't want to say that. I'm just saying that we need to get onto something that works, and if whatever works for you, that doesn't hurt other people. All right. Uh, line, line one, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer and Art Bell. Hi. Hi. Uh, good morning. Um, Mr. Templer, I'd like to get... Uh, to some of the scientific uh, things you were discussing in the first hour. Uh -huh. um, you, do, you mentioned the uh, helmets uh, for protecting uh, against, uh, I assume, telepathic type impulses from the... No, against abductions, he said. Uh, oh, right, yeah. And the uh, orgone uh, uh, guns uh, and interfering with... Um, uh, the, the UFOs. Uh, All right, what, what is your exact question, actually? The helm right and so on. Right. Well... The thing I'm getting to is that uh, much of uh, what uh, you said in that uh, first hour is uh, uh, verified or confirmed in uh, a book uh, called The Montauk Project by uh, Preston B. Nichols, and I wondered if you're familiar with uh, his work. I'm not familiar with that book, no. Ah, well. Uh, well, it's interesting because it uh, says... Uh, you know, covers just about everything you were saying. And in addition, uh, you might want to uh, check it out. It has, because uh, you mentioned something really a uh, major problem in the uh, universe as a whole right now, that it was kind of unstable. And um, it indicates in there that uh, there is a riff in uh, the space-time continuum between 1943 and 1983, uh, which was a result of the Philadelphia experiment uh, at the at the 43 end. All right. Well, he's covering an awful lot of territory there, Mr. Templer. Uh, uh, as uh, a rift uh, during those years in the space-time continuum, uh, produced by whatever. Well, there's a lot of things that have happened. Again, it's really hard to document that, that those actual experiments did anything. Uh, there's a lot of different experiments going on, and there's uh, a lot of uh, manifestations that are going on now that are in uh, such great quantities that uh, something has happened between the, uh, between the spirit world and this regular world and the alien. That, you know, everything is coming together as a head here. Uh, but there are devices that have been used for many, many years that uh, radionics-type devices and these uh, so forth that have been proven to have all sorts of different effects. And there's nothing, uh, it's science, there's nothing great occultness about it. Mm -hmm. Will science and the occult ever absolutely meet in the sense that science will be able to verify uh, what so many say about the occult? Well, you know, it used to be that the occult and science were one and the same, and that your scholars used to practice both, and that's what we need now, because we need to have different answers to things. The old answers are not working. So uh, this is an interesting aspect. You're suggesting that these are indeed ancient 
things that were once regarded as 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 science and uh, slipped uh, slipped away from us somehow and now are only regarded by people like yourself and others who believe. This is very true, and if you read about it, uh, most practicing, quote, magicians or witches or whatever you want to call them were involved in all this science. Uh, the healing uh, of herbs and all these other things that have been proven to be effective uh, were all mastered by these and then later lost. All right. Uh, good morning. On the first-time caller line, you're on the air coast-to-coast -coast AM with Art Bell and James Templer. So I'd like to know Mr. Templer's thoughts on the axis shift and why are we experiencing so many earthquakes and volcano eruptions, and are these two things related? Well, I'm not sure. You know, again, these are theories that uh, some people put a lot of credence in this axis shift. I'm not really sure what's going on. I tend not to believe that. Uh, all these, we're getting very strange weather, and we're getting very strange uh, earthquakes, as you mentioned, and volcanoes and places that have never even had activity before. And, again, whether this is a natural evolving of the planet or there has to be some alien influences that are playing with these things to see what actually they can do is still uh, unknown. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ma'am, where are you calling from? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, here in town, and a first-time caller at that. All right, Wild Card Line 3, you're on the air, Coast to Coast AM with Art Bowen, James Templer. Where are you calling from, please? Yeah, this is Shane from Bakersfield. Yes, Shane, you have a question? Yeah, i got a couple, Art. Uh... Have you ever heard of a, a guy named uh, the Amazing Randy? Yes, we talked about him earlier, sir. What's that? We talked about him earlier, sir. So, uh, have you talked with him? You mean the Unamazing Randy? Yeah. Um, the Unamazing. Generally, uh, I've not talked with him personally, but you know, there's. It's amazing that there's a whole society of debunkers out there that spend their entire life trying to disprove something. Maybe they go off their butt and prove something for once and change something instead of just standing out there pointing figure, fingers. Uh, okay, James. He he will give you a hundred thousand dollars if you can prove what you're saying. Well, what I've understood, well, that uh, he's not come through on his deal on many occasions. Uh 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 uh. No, you can't pull that with me, man. It doesn't work like that. Every time somebody... We don't really care religion. who we approve, uh, any, prove anything to anybody. It's really unimportant of proving. That's into your little mindset, not ours. No, that's the problem. You cannot prove anything you have said. You prove to me what electricity is, the common cold is, and how to cure acne, and I will agree with you. See, you and, and, and Shane, to be fair, uh, Randy also can't prove the negative. That's he, right. He, he can make the offer, but he can't prove it either. That's right. See, it's, it's like you state the fact that you think is a fact, and you expect everybody to believe it. We state that these are research that people have to look into these things and take the alternatives here instead of just being negative and working with the old ways of doing things that obviously are not working. Well, what do you do for a living? This is my living. Yeah, I knew it. You, you got a book? We sell all sorts of things. We're a nonprofit organization, and we uh, we have no gripes about any of that. Our profits go into doing our further research and teaching, and we have all sorts of items. We sell books and authors and everything else. We have no gripes about that. Are you a communist? You don't believe in uh, the system? Is that right? You're you're Absolutely. non you're nonprofit, but you do this for a living. Of course. How the United that be? Way who paid its uh, four hundred thousand dollars, I believe. Yeah, people people who uh, are administrators of uh, nonprofit organizations are allowed to have salaries. That's that's legitimate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know that, Art. Okay, thank you very much for the call. Sense the little tension there, uh, Mr. Temple? <laughs> um, a, a lot of people, once they, uh, they they find out that you earn your living in some way, then, of course, immediately ascribe um, a motive. Uh, when did you decide to get this organization going and, indeed, uh, be able to make your living um, with what you're doing? Well... Uh you know, the organization has been around for a long time. I took it over approximately uh, 10 or so years ago. But uh, the idea is that uh, we're here to give out quality information and try and evolve the planet a little and open up some minds. And, uh... All right. First time caller line. You're on the air uh, in Las Vegas with Art Bell and James Templer. Good morning. Where are you calling from, please? Good morning. Uh, Bremerton, Washington. All right. You're on the air. Um I fell asleep listening to Rush Limbaugh, and when I woke up, you were talking to this James Templer, and I just wondered if uh, if he believes that these psychic mediums that are so popular, people like Sylvia Brown and George Anderson, are real, or uh, are they fakes? or what? Actually, they... actually, sir, it's only been five minutes since you've been asleep. Mr. Templer came along and disintegrated Rush. Oh. And anyway, your question was... Uh... <laughs> um. Psychic mediums like Sylvia Brown and George yeah. Anderson, 
you know, they're in a lot of books and on television and so forth. Are they are they real, genuine mediums? Can they put me in touch with someone who's died or, or what? That is a good question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Templer. You know, each person has to be investigated to see if they're... Uh, I haven't investigated those two people in particular. I don't have too much use for channels because you really don't know what you're bringing in or not. They just open themselves up and take it, anything into it. And uh, I've never seen really any concrete information coming from any of these people. I frankly am suspicious uh, of uh, channels, period. Yeah, I mean, they feed you the same old uh, mumbo-jumbo that's been written for the last, uh, you know, hundreds of years on uh, spiritual uh, belief systems. I don't really, you know, every time you ask them for, you know, this, this, or that, uh, they can never come up with it. Nevertheless, um, to return to his question in a way, uh, is it possible to contact w loved ones that have died? Uh, it seems that you can. There's very few people. That, again, these things don't happen every day, but there are people that uh, can tap again into these spirit realms. Hmm. All right. Um, line two, you're on the air, Coast to Coast AM, with uh, James Templer and Art Bell. Yes, uh, Mr. Templer, yes. uh, have you uh, ever had the occasion to read the biography of a lady in the first part of the uh, last century, uh, the first half of the last century? Her name was Anne Catherine Emmerich. I don't know that exact uh, book. Well if, well, if you ever do get a hold of her biography... It was done, incidentally, by the chief gun in uh, the literary circles of that time, a man called Clemens Brentano. And uh, she <clears throat> saw all these things that, uh, and it would agree with many of your conclusions, um, in contemplative uh, uh, state of prayer. And she, she described briefly, um, and in detail in some cases, about the uh, the whole three hierarchies that existed. Uh, All right, sir, we're almost out of time. Uh, well, I'll it's take a little couple. You can have a time for you. All right. Uh, did you make anything out of that much? Um, I, I said I'm not familiar with that work, so I really can't count on that. All right. Um, so I guess with even more explanation, you could not have. Are you there, James? I am. Are you holding together through all this barrage? I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Good. Well, then, here's here comes some more enjoyment. On the, uh, well, you would have been. Uh, Wild Card Line 3, you're on the air with James Templar in Las Vegas. Yes, I wanted to ask Mr. Templar if, uh, would he say that our, form, our, go our government in the form that we know it is Satanism or a cult, and it's so, does he have a plan how to be protected from it? Good question, uh, Mr. Templer. Well, I don't think our, our government is satanic or any way. It's just, uh, I mean, you can believe how you want to believe in that area, whether you're a conspiracist or not. I believe there's probably a ruling group that does most everything, but uh, they're not hooked up to any particular religious belief that I know of. All right, so then all those people who have consistently told me that Ronald Reagan was the devil incarnate are wrong. Now, that's silly. Okie dokie. On the first time caller line, you're on the air with James Templer in Las Vegas. Good morning. Yes, my name is Chris. I'm calling from Anchorage, Alaska. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hi. I was curious. Uh, John Lear talked about the, the Petri dress uh, philosophy there, where, where it seems like we're just kind of a genetic experiment uh, subject to the alien's control. And I was wondering uh, if he agreed or disagreed with that. Uh, Generally, it seems like that. It seems that they have... Uh, has uh, experimented with the society, and if you look at certain uh, technology and so forth, and even the way the ancient Egyptians looked, the way they shaved their heads, they looked very much like the Greys and so forth. It's, uh, but it does seem like they've uh, used us as kind of a experiment. Do you uh, foresee maybe a possible termination of this experiment, uh, maybe according to John Lear, like around the turn of the century? Something's going to happen. We we have are coming into us in about ten years. We're not sure how violent or what's going to happen with it, and uh, so forth as of this time. Do you think that uh, maybe human beings have become uh, maybe something gone awry, and perhaps something that the aliens or whatever might fear, or perhaps dread? Uh... Well, I don't think you know. Uh, considering how the humans are acted in general, uh, you know. To, them not having too much respect for us is, is pretty normal. I mean, we're we're destroying this planet. We really don't take care of anything. Our society really hasn't built much. So, uh, 
they probably look at us as a lower life form as we look at a person or an animal, I should say, in the, in the zoo. Well, I understand that... Uh, that, that our technology is advanced far enough that we might be able to, uh, you know, do something about what's happening. But, but is it true that maybe we might be just being spoon-fed the technology, and that there is vast technology available to us that we're not even aware of? Well, there is vast technology that uh, most people aren't aware of. There's all sorts of different weapons and so forth. But uh, I don't know about being led or spoon-fed by the aliens themselves. You know, all the details of these things are very unknown. There's a lot of disinformation, and it's really hard to pinpoint what's real and what's not. Do you, I guess on a final note then, do you, do you think that we're possibly in our final days or maybe just beginning? Oh, that is a good one. Thank you, caller. Mr. Templer, the final oh, days. I don't want to get in pessimism here, and as I said, there's ways of fighting these entities, but we have to be aware of this like everything else, and uh, there is something going on. We can't ignore it, and we've got to ask for answers. Uh, don't you, though, see some parallels, my friend? In other words, uh, a lot of the religious people are constantly calling me. I've, you, you're a listener to the show, so I know that you know it's so. And, uh, and uh, talking about prophecy and saying, yes, these are the final days. And here's Mr. Templer, not exactly uh, your number one Christian, uh, who's also saying, uh, you know, the ball game may be over or at least severely challenged inside of ten years. Aren't these similar prophecies? Well, all ancient writings have these ending stories with them. There's very similarities. But I'm more concerned about uh, getting some awful disease and dying of it, eating poisoned food, and having my entire environment uh, die out from under. All right, Mr. Templer, we've got a break for the news. Stay there. We'll be back. The trip back in time continues with Art Bell hosting Coast to Coast AM. More Somewhere in Time coming up. Featuring Coast to Coast AM from February 13, 1993. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Art Bell. My guest is James Templer. He is president of the International Guild of Occult Sciences College and Research Society. We're talking about all aspects of the occult. Magic, sorcery, witchcraft, life after death, UFOs. And I guess UFOs by many are considered to be part of the Occult. So if you have questions in any of these areas, uh, come on ahead. Remember, if you're east of the Rocky Mountains or you're a first-time caller to the show, you can reach us at area code 702-385-7213, 7213. And before the questions even begin, if you want a copy of this show, there's been a lot of information presented, you can obtain one by calling area code 702 702- 873-3821. Let me give that again if this will forestall the questions. Uh, copies of this show or any other show, uh, including John Lear shows and others that uh, we have run, um, come from a company called Quantum Software Solutions, Inc. And the telephone number to call to obtain the copy is area code 702873 Three eight two one thirty eight twenty one. Hope you got it, Mr. Templer. Are you there? Yes. All right. Back to the telephones we go. On the first time caller line, you're on the air. Good morning. Uh, yes, I'm calling from uh, Chula Vista. Chula Vista. And I was wondering if Mr. Templer had any comment on uh, Ouija boards as like in use as a medium. And I'm sure you might have a couple of comments. All right, and I'll wait for my uh, uh, sir off the air. Humorous, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and spend a, a moment or so on Ouija boards? What should people that have them in the house do with them or not do with them? Well, I, I generally don't uh, recommend people playing with them because, uh, as I stated before, they, uh, the type of uh, spirits that are drawn in by them tend to be uh, low-level spirits that aren't really out for the good. Uh, there are better, quote, divination systems, which are fortune-telling systems that you can use that are much more reliable. Why did the Ouija board work when it did? What's the whole theory? You know, several hands on the little widget 
Well, so, some people even use it together, which is even more dangerous. But, uh, I mean, uh, use it by themselves, I should say. Uh, but, again, you're drawing in spirits, and it's supposed to be actually moving this. Of course, you yourself are the channel through it. So, again, it's difficult with that special type of system, uh, again, with getting credible information. Because if you've got your hands on it, you are affecting it directly. So, it's a, it's a game, and it was popular one period of time. But it's really, uh, you know, I wouldn't put any credibility other on it other than a party game. Mm hmm. All right. Wild Card Line 3, you're on the air with James Templer in Las Vegas. Good morning. Hello, hi. Hi, where are you calling from, please? St. Louis, I'm sorry, calling from Seattle, Washington. All right. And um, this is the uh, this is uh, the one talking about UFOs? Yes. Okay. Um, do I, I have a question, right? Okay. I'm surprised that I got through. I, I understand. Uh, just gather yourself together and go ahead and ask. Okay. What I want is um, that... Um, Okay, like I have, a, I have been having dreams and nightmares. Okay, and like I know it's something around me, but I don't know what it is. But the dream that I had, like I was going down my steps, and in and when I was going down the steps, like it was God. He had his arms around me, but it was this big black dog, and this black dog was looking at me. And I told the dog, if you was a good person, you can uh, be with God also too. And then God said that that couldn't possibly be my child. And the dog looked at me. But then after that, the dog came all the way through the back of my window, okay? Then after that, it opened my door. My door is always locked, so I don't know how the, uh, the dog got in. But I was dreaming that the dog was over me, and I was talking in my dream, you know, and I could hear myself talking, trying to wake up. But I was saying that uh, the dog was saying, I will get you, I will get you, you're not ready to fight, I will get you. All right, there's one aspect of it that I didn't understand. Are you saying that your dream actually turned into reality, that there actually was a dog in your room? No, I said, no, okay. Look. So this was all a dream? Right, but see, uh, at the same time I woke up, I was I could hear myself talking in my sleep, like you try, I'm wrestling, trying to wake up. Sure, sure. Mr. Templer? Well, again, you know, dreams are very unreliable. So, you know, if you get the same dream over and over again, it may either be your subconscious or some sort of spirit being trying to warn you. You have to, again, write these things down and see how they manifest in your life. If you get the same over and over again, you know, something is trying to be told to you, as I okay. said. Okay, but then I have a dream that I have, um, the next day I had a dream that somebody threw a rock in my window. And the day, and uh, a week, about four days after that, I had a dream that, uh, somebody put this woman. It's like it's bad nightmares since I've been in this apartment. All right, thank you. Uh, is there anything? Let's take this approach uh, that you could su suggest somebody plagued by nightmares or e bad dreams, evil dreams. Yeah, you know, well, again, there's meditative techniques and so forth you can do. If they get constantly plagued, they should uh, possibly seek some help with it. But uh, gen again, dreams are so unreliable. A lot of this comes to your personal fears and to your own uh, basic psychology. So it's uh, you know you've got to really research these things and know what you're talking about. Do you remember the uh, the movie, uh, Mr. Templar, Forbidden Planet? Uh, vaguely, yes, out of the 50s uh, invasion. I That's think. right. It was an older movie, uh, very well done for its time, though. It had Robbie the Robot in it. That may help you recall. Right, right, yeah. Uh, in Forbidden Planet, uh, uh, I don't feel badly, poorly about telling the ending, uh, the man uh, was trying to kill with tremendous power a monster of his own creation. And I thought that a particularly interesting uh, plot. In other words, uh, from dream to imagination to reality. And uh, he, in effect, created this spirit, this monster, this horrid thing that was after him. Yes, well, I think this, you know we live in a very people have constant thought forms that are negative, and we've built a very negative environment that empowers a lot of negativity. So it's very hard to put positive things out and to make changes because everyone is is creating these negativities. Yeah, I guess I was trying to say uh, again: is it not possible that these things the, that we regard as spirits and things from other worlds are creations of our own, um, the, the negative side of our own? Uh, uh, subconscious. It is, uh, and a large portion of them are. How much, we really don't know, but the mind does create these type of things. And how much of the mass uh, thinking of, uh, of, of millions of people thinking on one thing that creates uh, uh, young and the uh, universal consciousness so went into a lot of this. All right. Good morning. On the first time caller line, you're on the air. Where are you calling from, please? Las Cruces. Las, uh, New Mexico? Yes, sir. Welcome to the show, and the big one, KOB, sends you along. You're on the air with Mr. Templer. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Art. Mr. Templer, uh, uh, have you ever noticed, um, have you ever flown in a UFO? 
No, I haven't. Okay. Uh, how much are your helmets and your uh, equipment? I'd like to know that. I, and my I, second question is... So if you want information, you can send to us. I, I don't know if that's... Uh, I don't necessarily want to uh, give out yes, prices. Sir. Peddle the stuff. Yeah, we're, we're going to give out another... Uh, listen for the 800 number, sir. I wanted to ask one other question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when you look at somebody in the back and they turn around and look at you, what activates that? Have you ever done research on that? Yeah, that's basic uh, psychic power. You're just projecting. I mean, most people can try that and do it. I'm, uh, almost everyone can do that. Just focus on somebody behind the lines so you can get them to turn around. I mean, this is your basic psychic 101. Well, it variably happens to me all the time, and I wondered what in the hell I did. Yeah, you have some natural psychic abilities that just are more than the average person without any training. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Templer, are there people that can read our minds? Yes, there are psychics that can, do, that can actually do that, and you can implant thoughts in people and all, all sorts of things. You can implant thoughts in people. Uh, give me an example. Uh, something they would then regard as their own brainstorm, that sort of thing? Well, this is actually a form of uh, how magic works. A lot of people do this in the nighttime when someone's sleeping where they're most vulnerable, and you can actually implant a thought in someone's mind. Part of these psychic helmets do the exact same thing, and you actually uh, affect someone in their subconscious, and they believe that that's their thought. Wouldn't that be um, in, a, in a more perfect world where psychic abilities were verified? Wouldn't that be a horrendous invasion of privacy? Well, it is. And if you're doing these for any negative things, it's, uh, any purposes or for egotistical purposes, this is uh, against the general code of occultism. But uh, we're being brainwashed all the time by the media and by uh, television, by advertising. Uh, you know, we're all taking this in constantly. So it's. Uh, How many people are walking around making important decisions based uh, not on their original thought, by, but on somebody's uh, psychic suggestion? Well, again, we don't really know. Uh, you, uh, there's not a lot of ignorant hillbillies involved in this. Uh, people in our organization that go the entire gamut from executives and so forth. We've been contacted by major companies and uh, so forth, and the military has been practicing these things for years. So you really don't know what's happening out there or not. Hmm. All right. Uh, line three uh, in Las Vegas, you're on the air. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Art. I'd like to, Mr. Templer to, uh, to see what he thinks of my scenario. Uh, I feel that uh, or organized religion, including the Bible, is like wearing a shackle through life. Oh, he disagrees with you, ma'am. Pardon? He disagrees with you. He disagrees <laughs> with me? No, he doesn't. <laughs> and uh, also that the, uh, the, the closer you become to nature the more perceptive uh, are, your senses are. Maybe I'm not making sense it's because it's... Four no, that's, that's typical uh, paganism, which uh, I tend to agree with because I'm a person of all the nature. But, uh, you know, we need to get over religion and get the answers to things and right. solve and, our problems and, and stop getting bogged down fighting each other. Exactly. And you also uh, kind of develop a sixth sense when you uh, have... Uh, more contact with nature and less human contact. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. And uh, you know, I tend to have the Ross Perot philosophy that, you know, we need to put everything aside and get to the answers here. And there's a lot that could be learned by nature. And I know, but uh, Mr. Templar, one thing Mr. Perot does not put aside is uh, religion. Generally so, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Uh, have a good morning. Lord, this is fun. Uh, on the first time caller line, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templar. Good morning. Well, one comment on Ross Perot, you know, in his speech just before the election, he said that he had a voodoo stick that was given to Hello? him. Hello? Yeah, yeah, hold on, caller. It's interesting, I thought. Uh, oh, oh, a voodoo stick. Well, uh, yeah, uh, that's true. He did, and he used it as a pointer or something. Uh, caller, go ahead. Okay, this is TD from Redlands, California. Redlands, uh-huh. Uh, I find it quite interesting, and I'm 50, and I've been involved in, in the uh, esoteric study since I was 20, and I've was a practicing uh, lay hypnotist doing hypnotherapy and also past life um, for about 18 years. Uh, I find that uh, you're very credible. And I'm going to be in Palm Springs Wednesday. Is there a chance that uh, I can meet with you or... Uh, well, again, contact we'll give out the, uh, the 800 number and so forth. You can contact us and we'll see it. All right, we'll give out the 800 number here in a moment, sir. Copy it down. You can make private contact that way. How's that? I, have, I do have a comment or a question. Okay, go ahead. Have you ever heard of AL 
I mean, um, A. B. Glazier. A. B. Glazier, and I don't. The name doesn't to ring a bell with uh, me. Now. He wrote uh, what's called the Modern Human Comp Courses. Uh, I'm not familiar with those. Well, uh, I've got a lot of videos on him, and and uh, this is some type of philosophy that hardly anyone has heard of, but uh, it's one that, after 30 years of study, I find it's the most plausible. Since we haven't heard of it, what what is the philosophy, basically? <laughs> well, basically, uh, real simply, he's talking about the fact that we have three individual minds, A, B, and C, animal, beauty mind, and competitive mind. And the competitive mind is the mind we walk around in every day. Yeah, but less and less in America these days. All right, sir, thank you. So three separate uh, minds, Mr. Templer. Um... One, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templar. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Um, ever since 1988, we've had more sightings of UFOs in um, world history. And i just like to know, and I, I think this is a legitimate question to ask. Mm -hmm. Everyone looks at an alien with big eyes. and um, Could this be the Antichrist? All right. Thank you. I really don't know. We really don't know anything about these entities. No, but I will ask and follow up on what he said. Um, he's right. In recent years, the number of sightings of UFOs and uh, abductions and all the rest of it, all this has gone wild. That's right. Um, or the media simply reports it more. But it does seem like it's kind of really gone up. Is that because we've got a sensationalist uh, media looking for stories like this, or is it because uh, the, these things are really increasing? That's because these things are increasing. As I stated, there's uh, this veil between the two worlds has been broken wide open. We've had record numbers of these, record numbers of possessions and hauntings and everything else. We're in a major state of flux now, and the next ten years are really important. And you, you claim, don't you, that magic or sorcery or witchcraft can, can pull us out, can save us? Yes, it can. If you're choosing a, our organization is, is geared away from a lot of this philosophy and religion that's coming out. We're geared towards practical things that work, and that's what we're trying to fight. We're trying to find alternatives, do this and this and this to get X result. All right. Uh, let me hit you with a couple of today's problems. Uh, crime, violent crime, up terribly. People killing each other, chopping each other up, doing each other in for sneakers, that sort of thing. Uh, truly, to some really evil behavior, uh, uh, Mr. Templer, uh, what could magic, sorcery, witchcraft, or the occult do to stem this? Well, you know, you, the problem is, is being depowered, is, is what the problem is. So people go into perversion to, to empower themselves because we've given away our power to the police, to the judges, to the lawyers, to the doctors. We're all basically corrupt. And uh, they've achieved absolutely nothing. So to uh, to gain this power back that we've lost, we uh, we rape, rob, and what else the uh, perversions we can get involved in. If you re-empowered yourself and uh, channeled your energies into manifesting what you wanted in life, you wouldn't need to have to go through these things. You wouldn't even need any of the services of those people. And yeah, um, if wishes were fishes. But how? In other words, how can what you know be applied to change the trend? <laughs> It's by educating people to learn that they have power back, and they can actually do this through psychic techniques so they can take care of their health. They can do it so they don't get into legal problems. So if they want something in life, they want to be more successful, they can use their energies to be more successful. And they won't have to go out and use a gun. They won't have to be felt, uh, felt helpless and stuck in a ghetto somewhere or uh, have to resort to drugs to, uh, to find enlightenment. Drugs, uh, that's another big one, kind of tied to the violence. Uh, does the world, uh, does the psychic world, if somebody enters it, uh, make it easy for somebody to kick the habit, whatever it is? Well, everything takes work. There's no quick fixes in the occult either. It takes work and practice and dedication. And uh, But there are answers. If you learn how to calm your body and you learn how to get off of these, you don't won't need the highs if you learn how to properly channel your energies. You're, you're doing it for an escape because you're disillusioned for some reason or another. All right. Uh, good morning. On the first time caller line, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Hi, I'm calling from Medford, Oregon. Yes, sir. 
I'd like to ask a question. If you have been abducted and you not know for sure, how do you find out if you have? I have had a couple mm -hmm. incidents happen that I think that I have been abducted, kidnapped, or whatever. All right. Um, well, that's a good question, but it's a very general question. Why don't you tell us what led you to believe that you'd been abducted? Maybe you could help there. Okay, I was about 14 years old, and I had a paper out. It was at night time. And I was uh, on my way home, and I had to go over this big hill. And about 200 feet before I got to this hill, there was a light that lit over above me. It was not a street light. This light was following me. And it scared the heck out of me. I remember crying. I, I, I remember getting to the top of the hill. I mean, being at the top of the hill, but I don't remember going all the way to the top. And I... You know, it bothered me for some time, and then a few years later, uh, when I was 21 at the time or older, I heard this really strange noise. And my thoughts immediately went back to that time, and, and I, I scared me so bad, I almost pottied my pants. I was crying. I, and I said, oh, no, they're back. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Templer, um... What would you tell that gentleman? Could he now, today, find out if he'd been abducted? Is there a way he could check that out? Well, it's real difficult, but, I mean, generally the way it's done uh, pretty much from all the cases and all the authors that are written on this subject is you have to go through some hypnosis because everything is still in your mind, and you have to be able to bring those out, and you have protective elements that wouldn't allow this to come to your normal consciousness. Yeah. It, is, it is true, Mr. Templer, that through uh, re regressive hypnosis, people relate things that they couldn't otherwise have knowledge of, and uh, why is that not accepted by the larger community as proof? Well, I'm not really sure because hypnosis is pretty much considered, uh, I mean, they've used it in law cases and everything else as they've said. But again, it's like everything else. You can't repeat it 100% of the time, so uh, it's considered not a science. So unless it's completely repeatable, science scoffs. That's correct. But still, uh, in, the, in the realm of science, people uh, with languages that they don't know and knowledge they couldn't possibly have would seem to be some sort of hard proof. You would, and... Uh, you know, this can happen with many, many people. It's not the odd uh, situation. And uh, as you said, these have to be researched and put more energy into it. All right. We pause here while uh, some stations join the network. So stay right there. You're listening to Art Bell Somewhere in Time. Tonight featuring Coast to Coast AM from February 13, 1993. Inductees and whatever reason has you here, welcome and glad you're here. If you'd like to join us, pick up a telephone. We are that close. And, uh, Mr. Templer, back to it we go. On the first time caller line, you're on the air. Where are you calling from, please? Uh, from Reno, Nevada. Reno. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Templer, does he, does he believe in Satan and his demons? Well, you know, Satan is, is part of a specific belief system of Christianity. Uh, there are demons and there's negative forces out there. But uh, Satan is only really comes from the Bible. Because I heard you mentioning a lot of times the spirit world. Then who is who is the spirit world? Well, there are demon entities out there. There are positive and negative forces. So good and evil, God, course, and Satan, yeah. that type of spirit world. Yes, there, there's. It's like everything in life. There's generally a positive and negative of, of everything. Uh -huh. he, pre he pretty well agrees on the entities, sir. The the disagreement seems to come on the source. On the on the, where the spirit world came from. Yeah. Okay, so if if you just if you don't believe in the biblical spirit world, what other spirit world could there be? Well, it, you know, there, there's a whole spirit world. Christianity is only two thousand years old. I mean, you're talking about religions that go back, uh, you know, fifty thousand years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to really go ancient, so this, these are nothing new about any of these philosophies. Okay, because I'm, I'm thinking about like the Israelites were commanded not to go after other gods, and if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams 
said, let's go after these other gods, that that person would be stoned to death. And I kind of didn't know how to label yourself as to what you should be called. But well, was, how many how many uh, healed and partially healed wounds are on your forehead, Mr. Templer? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the love God has a lot of disciples that are uh, filled with hate. Well, that's true. I mean, you know, when you were mentioning uh, the ethnic cleansing in uh, Serbia, I was thinking that even Israel was commanded to cleanse their nation of all these idolaters. Well, I would I'd look at any any belief system that states to cleanse any other group uh, very leery. All right, sir. Thank you. Yeah, very much. Nice. All right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Wild card line three. You're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Oh, good morning, Art. Uh, this is funny. Uh, did you ever get any uh, information from George Green? Not as of yet. No, uh, Bonnie. Where are you calling from? Well, I'm from calling from Clear Lake, California. Uh -huh. No, not yet. But uh, uh, he's right in Carson City, I found out. Mm -hmm. And I would rather be hearing him, but uh, did you see sightings tonight? Uh, no. Uh, do you have a question for the guest? Well, yeah, it had to do with Ouija boards. He's... All right, well, hit him then. Well, he's uh, disclaiming sort of everything. He's sort of like a charlatan. But tonight on uh, on uh, sightings, they had these army guys that, and one girl who did this thing, and it came up with some incredible predictions that came through. They went AWOL from Germany. They were so astounded by it. And they weren't even court-martialed because the information was coming through. Did you get all that, Mr. Templer? Yeah, I did. I mean, you can use, you know, it's like a, you know, it's a difference between being a caveman and going after a, uh, a proper divination system and somebody who's more of a scientist. There are just better ways of doing it. Some people, like anything else, have some natural abilities. They pulled in something interesting, and uh, this is usually the exception rather than the rule. There are amateurs and there are pros is another way to put that, man. I'd rather be talking about real UFOs like George Green does instead of this malarkey. All right. Well, uh, you know... I think that she should be cautioned uh, by, uh, for calling it malarkey because whether it's George Green or uh, John Lear or any of the other UFOologists, uh, most of them will talk of uh, connections, some of them more extensively than others, but uh, many of the UFOologists feel there are connections uh, to exactly the kind of thing you're talking about, Mr. Templer, because I've interviewed a lot of them. I know. Line two, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Good morning. Yeah. Hi, Art. This is Bill from Las Vegas. Hi. How are you doing? Um, I have a question for Mr. Templer. I, I wonder if he knows what year he, he's living in. Well, obviously, that's a... Uh, Trick question? That's uh, obviously I know what uh, what year we're living in. Oh, okay. What is the point of that? Uh, All right, go ahead, caller. Just spring the trap. 1993, right? And right. it's 1993 years from what? For, for, what are you talking about? It's a Christian calendar. Is that, that what you're talking about? Well, it's your calendar also, isn't it? Well, it's a Roman calendar, so the idea is that. Of course, the days of the week are named after the Nordic gods. Oh, Did okay. you know that? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I wouldn't think you would. Okay, but it's, it is 1993 years after Christ, after the divine, correct? After some supposed mythology book states. Well, what does B.C. stand for then? I don't need a history lesson. What's the point of this? You obviously have your belief systems. If you're happy with them, keep them. I don't think you should shove it down everybody else's throat or murder the people in Yugoslavia for it. Okay, the point is, if Christ, uh, you say, isn't documented, which he is uh, majorly by uh, a bunch of different writers, not just one Roman writer. I mean, if you look into Pontius Pilate, um, uh, you'll find a lot of documents, uh, documentary, uh, documents on uh, the crucifixion of Christ and uh, um, and also the resurrection. Just take, a, just, take a, just take a look in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, I don't really go by any of those sources. Most uh, scientists, uh, or I should say researchers in that, are coming from a prejudiced point of view, and they really don't know what they're talking about. We don't have any documentation. The Britannica is, is, a, is a Christian There really book. doesn't have any documentation. No books have really survived. We've got bits and pieces of records. We're trying to interpret all sorts of things, and it's, uh, you know, the validity, as you said, every religion depends on a belief, just like paganism does. And if it works for you, fine. But to try and make it scientific, whether it's pagan or Christianity, is a fool's errand. Well, I think I think it's a lot more documented than what you're trying to to make a lot of people believe in, and uh, um, I think you're leading people right down the, to the path of hell. And and unfortunately, uh, uh, you're doing a, a good job because you know you're you're uh, deceiving a lot of uh, people that 
happened to not have studied into it at all. All right. Thank you very much, caller. Well, that was the kind of caller that your talk show host warned you about, Mr. Templer. You're leading ever, all of us down, uh, uh, down to hell, the path to hell. And uh, you must have, at some of your quiet moments, concerns that you might be doing that? Not really, not at all. I'm getting out information. We have people in our organization that are Christians, and they believe the way. We give people technology. We hope they're based in positive. We, we always state to do things positive and try and change the world for the better, whether it's you're, you're a Christian or not. Just don't harm other people. And if you have a belief system, you shouldn't shove it down my throat. All right. Uh, first time caller line. You're on the air in Las Vegas with James S. Templer. Well, I heard, I heard a comment at the bottom of the hour. You must have thought real interesting. Which one was that? That's the one about self-empowerment. Why would you think that? Well, because it seems to me that as, over the years as I've listened to you, I've never called because I've always thought it was too absurd. But I'll tell you what, that man had a message for you if you'd listen very carefully. And what was the message? The message was that since your parents were both military and so on... Oh, I know your voice. You've called all the time. You're not even a first-time oh, caller. In fact, you're a big fake. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm Miss Templer. I've become very good with voice. Not, nothing psychic about it. I know his uh, his voice. He's a complete idiot. Line three, you're on the air. Good morning. Hi, uh, Mr. Templer. Yes. Yes. Uh, are you uh, familiar with Claire Prophet? Uh, yes, I know of her organization. Yeah. Oh, oh right. yes. The organization I'm not concerned with. I'm talking about the methods. Oh, methods. For methods. Yes. Methods. Why would you choose to talk about that in, instead of uh, her prophecy as compared to what he... he... Well, her methods are how you build your understanding, that's all. Oh, I see. I'm not really sure. What do you mean about her techniques of, uh, yeah, her chanting and so forth? Other well, the chanting I'm not concerned with. I'm talking about the chakras within your system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this has been, you know, pretty much anybody who studies the cold understands the chakras. That's nothing new. So, yeah, that's my point. Now, Dr. Christopher, are you familiar with him? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. What do you think of him as far as a herbologist? Well, herbs and everything else have been shy. Most of our drugs come from herbs. Uh, aspirin came from the bark of a tree and everything else. So the idea is that herbs work. They're curing people every day. And, uh, again, this is something that's been provided on the earth. I mean, even the Christian Bible states that there's a healing for everything here, and that herbs are supposed to be, and that's what is the meaning of it. Now, that actually seems quite reasonable. After all, a lot of medicines are based on, look at the yew tree in cancer, most recent case. My next question is about uh, Mr. Manning, white magic. Are you familiar with him? Yes, I'm familiar with him. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me what you think? Uh, he seems to be a very uh, positive person that's doing some good. He's been around for a long time with his ESP lab in Texas. He's written some very good practical books, and uh, I've heard nothing but good things about him generally. Now, you talked before in your show about uh, when you die, you, you feel like you're still alive? No, I said some ghosts occasionally have that. It's very rare. Well, I understand that. The Rasha Krishners speak of that as far as astral projection. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Well, you mean, I'm not sure what you're talking about in terms of death in it, but astral projection is something that is another phenomenon that a lot of people claim to do. I'm not really sure what if, if that's real or not. Well, that's my point. I'm talking about as far as you were talking about when you die, you continue. You don't die. Yeah, generally you don't. You go to some, uh, from what we can understand, some Exactly, point. and then somebody wakes you up and says, hi, you're dead. And where do you go? Well, you go to some astral plane, and it depends on belief systems, and you know, there's a whole... You know, it's hard to prove any of these things in terms of... because it depends on your own religious background. But uh, generally, it seems, if you, to put it as general as possible, that you go to some place, you learn, or you become... or you stay there, and you uh, help influence other people. All right, the last thing. What do you think of social workers, and I'm going to hang up? <laughs> yeah, well, work. after that question. <laughs> I, I think anybody who's trying to do something positive deserves a pat on the back. I'm assuming they're trying to help people. Well, that's a good, safe answer. Um, uh, good morning. On the first time caller line, you're on the air Coast to Coast AM with James uh, Templer and Art Bell. Where are you calling from? Hello, ma'am. Oh? Yes. Yes, I'm calling from San Diego. Okay, very good. KSDO country. W welcome to the show. Thank you. I. Go, uh, turn your radio off. Off, off, off. Yes. There you go. Now let's try it again. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. I'm. <laughs> Excuse me, my husband is talking to me in the background. I'd like to ask Mr. Templer what he uh, believes about reincarnation if he 
believes people, uh, spirits just hang around someplace in the air waiting to be called back or waiting for us dumb live people sitting here to ask them for information and help in our lives? What happens when Again, there's, there's no black and white to these. Reincarnation seems to be a verifiable fact by the, by the by people that have been regressed and so forth. There are whole towns of people that seem to know each other. There was an instance of that, that everyone in that town seems to have been connected in a past life through hypnosis. Uh, and they found these things out. There seems to be a lot of that. You seem to go up to this plane, you learn something, and then you go back down onto this uh, this plane if you haven't learned enough to, to learn more. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Uh... I guess so. It just it seems so vague to me, you know. Well, I guess without absolute knowledge, um, you, you have to be somewhat vague. Uh, but he apparently believes in reincarnation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's always been one of my favorite topics, too. And I, I wonder, Mr. Templer, uh, with people not having any conscious memory from alleged lifetime to lifetime in the process of reincarnation um, how one is to improve if or, or, or come closer to perfection as it is said you're supposed to do without conscious uh, recollection of prior mistakes how, how do you improve yourself well again you're taught uh, where you generally you're supposed to as the reincarnation theory goes that you pick what you do uh, and the person you want to be. So you're actually you're forced to learn the lesson that you didn't learn or a new lesson you need to learn. So you've made the conscious decision beforehand that you will learn what you need to learn from when you reincarnate. Hmm. All right. Uh, I must say you do have a, a very good constitution. Are you normally somebody who's up all night? Well, I tend to be a night person, so... All right. Well, I'm glad you admitted that. Wild Card Line 3, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Lord, I wanted to respond to the gentleman who was uh, finding that when he would look at someone in the back of their head, uh, it, they'd get a re he'd get a response from them. We had a, I had some uh, training tapes from a private investigative college around here that uh, was very standard, but there was one comment that they made, which was, when you're following someone, telling someone, never look at them directly in the back of the head, because we don't know why, but it gets a response from them somehow. Oh, what a neat observation. And uh, the other one, the uh, African-American sounding lady who was having bad dreams in her apartment ever since she moved in there, I think she ought to check and see if someone was maybe killed in there or died in that particular apartment. And I'm done. All right. Thank you. Um, well, one thing at a time. Uh, first of all, his point that if you're following somebody, tailing them, never, ever look at the back of their head, that that will somehow tip them off psychically. Uh, anything to that, you think, Mr. Pepper? Of course. You know, this just is another point where this type of philosophy is used all constantly uh, throughout society. I mean, if you look at the occult references throughout to all of society, you see that, you know, they call people the Wizard of Wall Street. The word magic is used constantly. This is very much in everyone's consciousness. And these are the basic psychic things are proven and recognized by almost everyone. They does, just, uh, does Michael Milken have great psychic power? He probably has a psychic energy around him that uh, that gives him success in business. Well, then what? Did, why did he miss the part where he got caught? <laughs> well, nothing is perfect, and neither is this. It's all this research, and as he said, these are things to be looked into. If it was perfect, uh, uh, you know, all these people would be running the world. Uh huh. Uh, you, you know, as I listen to some of this, some of it seems possible because I do believe certainly in the power of the mind I think I believe in life after death so all of it is tempting to kind of listen to and partially believe in I worry though if there's really something to it that in fact our world may be presently propelled by people with psychic power uh, and I guess to some degree you're, you you would say it could be true yes it could the idea is to investigate this and find out what uh, what are the effects ultimately are on all these things mm -hmm. all right stay put <laughs> Line one, you're on the air coast to coast AM with uh, James Templer in Las Vegas. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Mr. Bell. Hi. Um, I have a few problems with your guest. Uh, well, I, I, you, you are not alone. 
One of them is that uh, he seems to mix superstition and psychic phenomena and UFOs and pop psychology and a number of other different fields which seem unrelated. And then he balls them into one big little ball there, and he, he manufactures his own religion. And uh, I feel he, he's doing an injustice to uh, to Christianity when he says, uh, that Christians are responsible for the murdering in, in Yugoslavia. Obviously, if they're Christians, they're going to follow the, the teachings of Christ, and Christ uh, has his own injunction to Christians on how to handle their enemies. And I don't have to tell you what that is. He told he told them to, to love their enemies and not to go out and slaughter them. So pe he, he doesn't make a differentiation between Christianity as a political movement and Christianity as a religious faith. And I feel that he's... Uh, He's really not taking into consideration the proper evidence for the Christian faith. I think if he would, he'd probably come to a different conclusion, which leads me to my last question. No, that's very well said and deserves a bit of a response. Uh, oh, I only want to, uh, well, hold on a moment, sir. I want the response. Uh, are you indicting without thinking it all the way through, Mr. Templer? Uh, you know, I mean, these things have been baited for for years. You know, a belief system in a religion, no matter what it is, is only really good to the individual. And if uh, if 2,000 years of Christianity had developed a group of people in an entire country that are massacring the other things, living the creed of that document, I think that but document... That's the whole point. Out. They're not living the creed of that document. Well, if they that's were, what they that wouldn't document do that. has brought. I beg your pardon? That's what that document has trained those people to do. No, no, that's what their own own uh, selfish nature has taught them to do. Well, it obviously isn't strong enough. There's to nothing, you, you won't find that in, as far as in the teachings of Christ are concerned. But what I wanted to ask you was this. What would it take for you to come to the conclusion that what you believe is absolutely hogwash? I, I, mean, I, I turn that question around to you. Well, see, I'm not running the radio show. That, I'm making the call. I want you to answer it. There's nothing. I know that I am on the path of you life, see, just like you, you believe you Well, are. that's the whole point. You see, an objective person has a threshold of evidence which he will consider but before he, he'll make the, draw the conclusion that he's absolutely right. You have no threshold of evidence. I believe in investigating everything, and you believe in investigating nothing. Wrong, you have a dogma wrong. That read you a book called a Evidence that, that Demands a Verdict. World for 2,000 years. Read, read a book that, that's entitled <laughs> Evidence that Demands a Verdict, and then you can tell me that my faith is... I don't need some biblical nonsense forced down my throat. If you're so... No, no, yourself, I'm not, I'm not so forcing loving. it down to your throat. Uh, why, why, don't, why don't you believe your own thing and change the world in your own way? Caller, I've got to hold it there. Thank you very much. Uh, hang tight, Mr. Templer. <laughs> In fact, you might buckle an extra buckle, and we'll be right back. This is Premier Networks. That was Art Bell hosting Coast to Coast AM on this Somewhere in Time. Somewhere in Time with Art Bell continues, courtesy of Premier Networks. Welcome back, everybody. I am Art Bell. This is Coast to Coast AM, my guest. From the International Guild of Occult Sciences, in fact, its president, that's the International Guild of Occult Sciences College and Research Society, James Templar, a very controversial individual, and as he suggests the Christians do battle, I have, for the most part, allowed you to do battle uninterrupted with him. And it has turned into a bit of that. Though we don't encourage it, we're actually talking about all manners of the occult. And uh, and that's what this is all about this morning. So we will continue that uh, in, in a moment. Card line three, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Art. How you doing? Fine, sir. First of all, I want to say you're excellent talk show host, Art. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Templer, first of all, I want to congratulate you against holding your own against these self-centered Bible thumpers that have been calling you all night that can't see past their own face. You know, they're they're so self-centered. I find them very sickening. Uh, the question I wanted to ask you was this. 
uh, these aliens that are out there, for the most part, are bad. Have they ever, do you know if they've ever monkeyed with or fiddled with any of the satellites or equipment that we have out in outer space? There seems to be some very strange things that have happened out there. And they, uh, they tend to think that there has been some tests to see what these items, uh, what they can do to these items. I see. It's amazing that the telescope doesn't give us any type of uh, information. Ooh, input, input. I've got a little. Uh, do you remember a shuttle mission, Mr. Templar, or caller, in which the astronauts reported seeing several angelic figures? I don't recall that, Art. Yeah, there's been several psychic uh, experiences and uh, views of uh, ships and so forth. And, uh, of course, the National Security Act, uh, they will put you in prison if you're an astronaut and come out and talk about that too much. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's what I've heard. I've heard that, uh, as John Lear has indicated, that there is a very large cover-up going on. And uh, <clears throat> I think you know that for a fact yourself, don't you? Well, of course. Uh, this is very scary uh, information. And... Uh, uh, who knows what's really happening here? And they're afraid to panic the public, which is there's probably some uh, validity to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. There probably is. Just based on what I've heard this morning, uh, people are emotional. Um, and this this is not comment that I believe uh, uh, one way or the other. Actually, yes, it is. I, I, I am a Christian, and uh, uh, so I'm sure you can tell. But uh, I do understand how what you're saying, if it were actually delivered as you'll excuse the expression, the gospel from the government, uh, would just scare the hell out of a lot of people. There'd be suicides, there'd be panic, there'd be anarchy, there'd be a big mess. Is that about right? Yeah, I feel pretty much the same way. On the other hand, uh, you know, we're going to learn about it sooner or later. But they're leaking information. That's one reason why there's so much coming out. Well, a lot of people, John Lear included, uh, speculate that uh, a lot of what's going on right now might be in a sense, to prepare the American people for receiving that information a, a little bit at a time. I, I agree with him on that. Uh-huh. Uh, Wild Card Line 3, you're on the air, Coast to Coast AM with James Templer. Good morning. Yeah, I had a question. You know, we've had a lot of experience with the cultists up here as well, with the dog mutilations. Where, where is up here, please? Where are you? We're in the uh, Sierra Nevadas in the uh, northern part of California. All right. And uh, we've had uh, all sorts of mutilations. People have been, uh, some people have been killed. There was an in incident up there in, uh, up around the Bay Area where a young man was killed by some cultists because he tried to get out of the cult. And we've had problems with murders. And as far as police know all sorts, I knew somebody that worked in the police department and said they have all sorts of uh, uh, documentation on uh, murders, I mean, uh, attempted murders, and et cetera, et cetera, because of these cultists. And All right. What I want to know is how can you defend some of these people? All right, thank you. Uh, I don't think you do, do you, Mr. I never, uh, you know, if we find out if any of these things are happening, we're the first ones to jump up and uh, make sure these people are handled. Uh, again, uh, I don't hear any of this information, and very few of it has been ever documented that I know of. I don't say close your eyes to it. I say watch it. If these people are doing things against the law, they ought to be uh, thrown in jail as quick as you possibly can. And most of these people are Satanists, which are not occultists. Well, nevertheless... Um, is it possible, in your estimation, for these people, through sacrifice of animals or even human beings and all the awful stuff that you hear about them doing, can they get power from that, uh, Mr. Temple? Uh, generally not. This is another myth of occultism. Uh, the powers that are released from something dying are so strong that it would take masters to tap into it, and uh, none of these people are anything more than uh, basically perverted cretins. <laughs> perverted cretins. Well, there is power there, though, uh, you admit. Uh, though you don't think they begin to know how to tap it. There's power there, but, I mean, there's power in all sorts of negative practices which uh, are not going to really do you any good, and uh, you're going to pay more prices for that ultimately. All right. On the first time caller line, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Where are you calling from, please? Uh, I'm calling from Palm Springs. <laughs> from Palm Springs to Las Vegas and back to Palm Springs. Very yes. Good. I don't know Mr. Templer. <clears throat> Probably in different circles. Uh, I am a born-again Christian. And I was delivered out of uh, occult-type thinking, uh, Eastern religions, and I was around some people that were into witchcraft. And I always felt a terrible, you know, depression, so forth, uh, for myself and others. And so after I became a born-again Christian, I just saw that they did not want to be around me. Of course, I realized I wasn't supposed to be around them either, but even before that, <clears throat> and I found that 
they really dislike Jesus and and then anyone that's a Christian. And I'd like to ask Mr. Templar uh, why that is that uh, people in the occult hate Jesus, actually, and uh, people that are true followers, not just people that say they're a Christian, but that truly follow Jesus. All right. Thank you, caller. And I've got a follow-up question if you want to make a comment. Yeah, there's a lot of bad occult groups, and I'll be the first one to say it. Uh, and I'm not, I don't give a blanket stamp to anything. Uh, you have to get involved in things to a certain degree, see if the people are doing it. If you found a way for you that works and you were involved in other negative people, then more power to you. I just say don't persecute other people for what they believe mm-hmm. and uh, stay on a positive path. And if that's through Christianity, great, more power to you. I just don't, you know, these people want to force it down other one's throat and they want to persecute People, All right, I, I'm going to lead you into a bit of a trap, Mr. Templer, but come on along. Well, it's worthy of the, going to spark a good conversation. Mr. Templer, would you say that it is true that a lot of Christians, a lot of people who believe in God and religion and, uh, as you called them, Bible thumpers, um, are basically weak people with weak personalities? Uh, they're using it as a crutch. Uh, they're... Uh, uh, falling into it as they might fall into many other things, drugs or uh, whatever. In other words, they're, uh, they're joiners, they're uh, uh, followers, they're people who uh, grasp at something to believe and then are contented uh, with, with that belief. It w- would that describe a lot of Christians, do you think? I think that describes the general populace. You know, anything that takes work, people don't want to do. If it takes some investigation, it's real easy to be a Christian. All right, well, now let me tell you where I'm going with it. Wouldn't you say that that exact same sort of person uh, would uh, would as easily fall into the kind of uh, thing that you're doing? Yes, because they look for alternatives and they get BS, to put it bluntly, by, uh, by, by bad groups, and there's plenty of them out there, and we've heard a lot of the scandals lately with them. And uh... Even your own organization, uh, Mr. Templer, you must, uh, uh, as you deal with personalities and people, uh, realize that some of them or even many of them are in that category? Of course. I think that's part of the human, uh, human condition. We don't present answers. We try and give people uh, avenues to investigate and practical tools to do something within their own framework without the least amount of dogma as possible. Hmm. Well, that's a good, honest answer, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Line one, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Mr. Templer, are you familiar with uh, any of Edgar Cayce's phenomenon? Yes, I am. Um uh, how do you rate him? Well, I think it's very interesting, and a lot of his healing techniques, which seem very strange, have worked. And he's channeled in some, it seems like he's channeled in some very good information that's helped a lot of people. What about his predictions? Uh, again, he he's tend to be very true in what he said, and I know he was a Christian and so forth. So, um, uh, the of course, uh, it's yet to be proven, but um, his healing techniques have been very effective and helped a lot of people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the call, and uh, good morning. On the first-time caller line, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Hi. Hi, I'm calling from Reno. Reno, yes, ma'am. Got right in. Yes, you did. Um, I'm not going to dispute or debate uh, your guest's beliefs, but I do have <clears throat> something I would that I would kind of like to share, and that is uh, that um, on the religious basis, <clears throat> the church of the living God is looking forward to the rapture or the taking away of the church out of this world and uh, over the years uh, I've known about this um, <clears throat> since around 1980 or even longer because I've heard it preached for throughout my life but the thing the, what, what I find is interesting that your um, guest uh, has confirmed what um, I have heard preached is that uh, not only is he had said that the uh, negative or demonic uh, power has um, is a, can, is more active than it was probably 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yes. But that um, the uh, this uh, UFO and alien uh, thing that's been picked up by our government and uh, that they're involved. Which uh, I've heard preach across their pulpit because uh, it's it's uh, because there there are people that are going to be left behind uh, in the rapture concept that because they received a not a love for the truth of the Bible that um, 
that they will be deceived. And uh, I, I always thought, well, how, what is, you know, whenever this does happen, what is going, you know, how is the government going to explain that? And it has come over across the pulpit for several years now, and even I have confirmed it, you know. Okay, we've got to hurry here. I'm studying is that the, uh, <clears throat> through the uh, uh, alien invasion of UFOs, and uh, this man thinks that something is going to really happen within 10 years. Yes, he does. He does. Uh, thank you very much for the call. And I, too, am struck uh, by the remarkable uh, similarities between those you've been battling with for most of the night yourself uh, in terms of general prophecy, Mr. Templer. Uh, the Christians, well, you know what they believe. We don't need to run over that. And I've heard what you believe, and there are remarkable similarities in the chronology of, of what both groups seem to believe. Well, again, you know, this is philosophy, and I don't want to be a doomsday. I said something's going to happen, but it doesn't mean we're going to be destroyed. Well, in well perhaps not, but... So I, 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 there's ways of fighting, there's ways of doing things, and I always believe in a warrior's philosophy myself, and the idea is to make sure that uh, if we're going to go, we go with a sword in our hand. But <laughs> these, uh, the reason why there's similarities is, as I stated at the beginning of the program, it's pretty documented that uh, all of the Christian sources are mimics of all the pagan sources that go back thousands and thousands of years before them. So there's a similarity there. Well, there are enough similarities that perhaps somebody sitting out on the edge, not necessarily a fully religious person or a person uh, uh, believing in what you believe in, might actually become alarmed that the two groups seem to uh, agree so much on something big coming soon. Now, how about that? Uh, line one, you're on the air with uh, James Templer in Las Vegas. Hi. Yes, I got one question for you. Mr. Templar, can you hear me? Yes. Earlier, a young man or a man uh, uh, was talking to you about the Bosnian disaster and the Christians, and he made a differentiation between what true Christians believe and what these people are doing. You did not make that distinction. On the other hand, when people confront you about occultists, you say, no, I have, the, I have the nerve to admit that there's bad occultists. Unfortunately, you don't seem to have the nerve to admit okay, there's bad Christians. Okay, that Christian. seems like hypocrisy. But, you know, society is rotting, our people are dying of disease, the law system is screwed up, the police are on a rampage, and you're worrying about silliness when the society has to be changed here okay, and do I'm something. Not, I'm not, I'm just this is a philosophy that only has any value to the people that believe in it. And okay, that goes with any religion. I'm asking you a question. How can you chastise somebody when they're telling you that, hey, these people aren't following that? Well, why don't you Christians rise up and go over to there and stop those people from killing? There's okay. enough of you Christians. But I you don't, don't see you doing anything. Thing. Where are the funds? Where's Jimmy Swaggart raising for Yugoslavia? Okay. Stop the Christians from killing. Okay. Swaggart's not following me neither, but I'm trying to ask you. Where are what? the ministers out there talking about that? I hear them silent. Okay, let, let me ask I you. I condemn when there's how bad How do occultists. you make a differentiation then in the occult when you have bad things there? If you're going to do it for the occultists, you have to do it for the Christians as well. And you're not doing that. It makes you a hypocrite. All right. I, it sounds like that's about it, Mr. Templer. Uh, hypocrisy? Well, there's hypocrisy in everybody and everything. I said religions are a problematic whether they're pagan or Christian. And uh... Well, I'll give you this. You do admit to fault, and that's... Uh... That's that's uh, that's humility, I guess, and uh, that's that's good. Uh, good morning. On the first time caller line, you're on the air with James Templer in Las Vegas. Yeah, my name is Mark. I'm from uh, Seattle. Hi, Mark. And um, getting back, there was a, uh, a little while back. There was a gal talking about her dreams, and um, it's understood that you know it's always nice to be able to write down your dreams, so you can go back and find out if there's some kind of a pattern. Um, my question to um, uh, the person there is, um, what does he think of the um, realm between, you know, um, present being, you know, people being alive and spiritual? Um, is there a connection between um, um, a physical being in the spiritual world? And um, the, I'm not sure I get that. Do you? I don't quite understand yeah, that either. Um, about six or seven years ago, um, I was at home. It was during the day. I was sick, and, you know, some type of um, spiritual being came to me. I'm a Christian, but I, I also go by, um, by your understanding as well of what's going on with this world. But, you know, getting back to it, this being had told me that everything that was going on in my life that was bad, that was disruptive to me, would all change, 
and that I would have to walk away from a marriage because that was one of the things that were bad. Caller, did you do that? Did you walk away from a marriage after getting that message? Uh, after I had had this so-called spiritual thing or whatever it was, um, I had confronted my wife and explained to her one of the last things that this um, um, being of some sort, had, um, he, I don't know if it was speaking to me or like he was saying, you know, a kinetic energy, had told me to leave my marriage first thing. Um, it also had said that a lot of changes would happen in my life that would just totally traumatic me as well Tra uh, trauma in your life all right uh, i i have to stop you and ask what did your how did your wife react uh, offhand when you told her uh, about this she was devastated for one um for another um she was she thought i was freaked out of my head um but as as i explained to her everything that this um spiritual thing had spoken to me one of the last things that it said that I was going to receive a um, a baby girl and I mean it was very explicit said you know, a, a baby girl all right we don't have a lot of time so let's rush through this your wife was pregnant um she wasn't pregnant before that okay but uh, that's when she got pregnant you didn't leave her after she got pregnant did you um hold on after after this spiritual being had spoken to me, it said that um, a promise would be that I would get a child, a redhead. And shortly after um, I had told her, we had found out that she was pregnant. We stayed together. The baby was born. And about six months later, we somehow we just separated, just as the being had said. And... The thing was that, you know, I had told a lot of people about this dream, and everybody thought I was crazy, but the thing was, when the baby was born, it was a little girl, and it was a redhead. All right. Thank you very much for that chilling call. Uh, do you think he fulfilled his own prophecy, uh, uh, Mr. Templer, or do you think that, uh, indeed, as he described, there was a being or an entity involved in this? Well, you know... In general, I wouldn't listen to voices no matter what you think they're good or bad. You have to take the information and analyze it and find out. To, to, to follow anything that speaks to you is a path that's going to get you in great trouble. Uh, he probably was picking up his own psychic feelings there. Uh, there could be some possible entity. We all have these. The Christians call them guardian angels. We have spirits around us he could be tapping into. But uh, it's, it's very dangerous to listen to voices, especially when you're untrained and unknowledgeable. Well, it's uh, particularly dangerous in the real world to talk about hearing those voices. And when people see you acting on the voices that you say you hear, frequently you edit, end up, you know, in a very padded place. Uh, oh, this is true, too. Yes, it is. Uh, stay right there, please. We'll be right back. This is Premier Networks. That was Art Bell hosting Coast to Coast AM on this Somewhere in Time. February 13, 1993. Well, good morning. If you're just joining us, you've missed a lot. James Templer is my guest. He's president of the International Guild of Occult Sciences. They study things like that at uh, this uh, society. And, Mr. Templer, if you're there, we'll continue to move. Yes, I'm here. All right. First time caller line. You're on the air with Mr. Templer uh, and Art Bell in Las Vegas. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Bell? Yes. Um, I'm calling from Seattle. Seattle, yes, sir. And this is my first time calling a talk show, but um, I wanted to ask Mr. Templer about some things that have happened in my life. Since it, this happened about in ninth grade, which is probably about, I think, about eight years ago now. But I met, I met this person, and I, when I met this person, I dreamt, about, I dreamt about meeting this person, and you mentioned drugs about um, a couple of, like an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, and about spiritualism. Hello? Yes. What was that about? What in spiritualism? Drugs. You mentioned drugs. Uh, yes, briefly. Mm -hmm. Well, I experimented with LSD or acid, mm -hmm. and this was in 10th grade. 
And when I experimented with this drug, this person was um, with me, this particular person, this my friend. And when I saw it, this, I, at that time, I thought it was a hallucination since I had taken drugs, LSD. This person came, this, when I was talking to the person, I'd never experienced anything like this. This image came at me, and it was, I described the image as these red eyes, and this face and this hair, I saw this image coming from his face. Mm -hmm. And as I, I talk about it right now, I'm still, like, I'm shaking kind of. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was just because of the drugs. But the thing, two years later, he called me up and he, we were talking. And he told me that he had a girlfriend and his girlfriend came into the room where he was. Mm -hmm. And he said that she, her schizophrenic, excuse my language, I'm Asian. I have a hard time speaking sometimes. Mm -hmm. I stutter. But um, she said that um, schizophrenic. Uh, yeah, she said schizophrenic. schizophrenic, whatever that. Right, right. It runs in her family, but she said that he said that she's got it too. But she sees a psychologist. But she said when she came in there, she saw the same thing I had seen when I was on drugs, the LSD. And I wanted to know if that, I mean, this person. I've always thought this person was really evil, and he believes he's evil too. And he just sounds, he doesn't seem to be a normal person. His parents, when I first met this person, his grandmother and his mom told me that they thought he was evil too because when he was a little oh. child, that he used to take off his grandmother's wig because she had a wig, she had a, a disease, uh -huh. and used to say all kinds of bad language inside like a grocery store and say, look at my grandmother, she's a blank, blank, blank. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you, caller. Um well, I, you know, I don't want to put down anybody's experience, but you know, we're very much opposed to drugs in all their forms, and it's uh, it's a dangerous thing to be mixing anything with drugs. Uh. All right, I do want to ask a question though that I hope you answer honestly. It's uh, everybody's uh, just say no to drugs, of course, but to follow up on what he started with LSD and other hallucinogenics. Would you regard these as simple chemical hallucinogenics, or does a strong hallucinogenic? Um, have uh, have uh, give you an enhanced uh, uh, possibility of walking through the door to something else. Only in the, the shamanic tradition that they actually use plants, not chemicals like LSD that are man-made. They actually use plants. And the theory behind them is you go into the soul or the, the being of this plant and it talks to you through this, hallucin uh, this hallucination uh, state. And shamans have been doing this for hundreds of years, and through a very disciplined procedure that they have that's been that's been learned and passed down, there's there is some validity to it. The average person doing this or taking drugs, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it, it has no meaning. All right, that's fine. Uh, what about the average person trying to reach uh, uh, an enhanced uh, psychic state through the use of some sort of organic mushroom? I think they even call them magic mushrooms, don't they? Again, uh, we're very opposed to that. You don't really know what happens. If you're in an altered state that you've manufactured through a drug, you don't know if this is a fantasy or reality. That's true, and I suppose uh, that would be way too far to interest you in the, in the sense that... Uh, there would be that confusion and less possibility of scientific uh, verification. There can be no verification, but there obviously there are some old traditions that. Uh, but I, you know, you can't follow this as a person here. You'd have to live in a tribal situation and go mm -hmm. through that. Very few people can uh, use any type of drug with any discipline. Very good. Uh, line two, you're on the air with James Templer in Las Vegas. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Art. Hello. Yes, Art. Yes, do you have a question, sir? Uh, yeah, I was just really surprised when I turned on the radio and heard you had an occultist on the radio today. Well, here he is. I just have a, a few questions. Being that you are a Christian, Art, and that uh, so many of your uh, listeners appear to be Christians, I think it would be interesting to give uh, equal time to someone uh, who would present a Christian point of view on things. I think. Uh, I have no problem with that, and most all the guests that I've had on, sir, have been Christian or uh, very religious people, so uh, if anything, this is the unusual, not the usual. No. Do you have a question? Uh, well, no, I just had a recommendation. I think that the Christian Research Institute would be happy to send someone that would be a guest on your show. Uh, if you had, like, the president of the Christian Research Institute, I think your listeners would benefit a lot more than a, a cultist or a uh, sorcerer or whatever. I understand the point of view, and I thank you for the call. And, uh, indeed, it might be fun... Um, that is to say, if that's our twisted idea of fun, and it is mine sometimes, uh, Mr. Templer, to have somebody on 
who would take you on uh, directly, uh, as this gentleman suggests. Would you be interested in that sometime? Time, any place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Line three, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer and Art Bell. Good morning. Yeah, thank you, Art. Uh, I'm concerned about the fact that uh, we're losing our planet. Uh, we seem to be self-destructing. Uh, there's more crime and corruption now than ever. Uh, I don't mean to be a negative, but I, I believe that is true. Um, uh, Art, your guest said that there uh, several times he said there are ways of fighting. Yes. But he never once said what those ways are. Well, he did. He, uh, I pinned him up on that one a little bit, and he resorted to saying, well, it's education, presumably education in the occult sciences or occult uh, beliefs. Well, now, if we call the 800 number, can we get uh, some uh, guidance or, uh, or information about how? Yes, we're I, being... I really think that there needs to be a concerted effort put forth uh, so that um, 10 years from now uh, we don't blow up. Or whatever. Well, we're all geared to practical. We, that's exactly what we teach people, and that's why we are a, uh, quote, college, and we, we teach people, we have courses, et cetera, of how to do things to change your life for the better, and that's what we're trying to do. Are they uh, um, uh, correspondence courses or what? Yes, everything we have is geared up to correspondence courses because we are an international group and we service people uh, everywhere on the planet. Well, I hope a lot of the listeners tonight on your program are, are concerned about this and get together and, uh, and, and learn what these ways of fighting this are and, uh, and do, you know, and try, try to save our world. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, no matter what perspective you're coming from, get out there that's and do right. something. And well, we all, all are concerned about changing the course of things. Uh, yes. That's the Mr. main Templer. reason for my call. Yeah, but all people have is talk and philosophy, and they don't have practical tools, and they don't get out and do something. All right. So we I... get out and do it. I don't care if you're a Christian or whatever you are. Get out and do something and change it. Just do it. All right. Uh, you know what the problem is, though? There's too doggone much apathy. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there, right. there is a lot of apathy, isn't there? Let somebody else do it. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Um, I wonder if it's a pressure of population or something that we just we feel lost and too small to accomplish anything well i'm trying to tell people that you're not and there are ways of doing it all right uh that opens one line in las vegas uh, in the metropolitan area 383-8255 wild card line three you're on the air with uh james templer in uh, las vegas good morning Yes, I'm calling from Seattle. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, I'm not able to hear you on the radio right now because KVI isn't carrying this part. Right. Are you able to hear him over the phone? Uh, yes. He's, he's listening to you right now. KVI went to their morning show, I suppose, at 5 a.m. Uh, anyway, you're on the air with Mr. Templer. Well, it's about reincarnation. I wanted to know uh, a couple of things. One, if he believes that if we come back, can we come back as other beings other than human? like uh, animals or something mm. and also supposing something were to happen to the earth and all life was to cease to exist where would all the spirits go since they couldn't come back Ooh, both of those are good questions mr templer well i understand jimmy swaggart's way stated to come back as a snail so um <laughs> but um Generally, uh, there is some, you know, again, there, there's no great proof of all this. From what we can tell, most people re reincarnate once they reach a human uh, form as humans. Um, the, uh, obviously, in India, they believe that you can actually reincarnate as anything, and that's one particular view. But, of course, since we don't have any way of uh, communicating with animals uh, to any great extent, uh, there has been no proof whatsoever that you can come back other than a human. Yeah. What do you believe? I tend to think you reincarnate as a human because that's the best way you can learn, and that's what reincarnation is all about. Yeah. Okay, now what do you believe happens if, uh, say, doomsday arrived and the Earth? What happens to all the spirits on Earth? They can't reincarnate into forms back on this planet. Ooh, good question. Well, but, you know, you don't have to reincarnate. As a matter of fact, what you're trying to do in your reincarnation process is to never reincarnate again because you've learned. And the people that are the masters that have achieved certain levels stay in the astral plane, and they, they serve as guides and teachers. Right, but uh, so you're saying that you wouldn't necessarily have to come back. You could achieve the final perfection uh, in the astral plane somehow or another. Or, you know, his question is a good one. What happens to all of those, uh, of those souls that have not achieved level that lets them go on instead of coming back again? 
Well, you know, if uh, you can either be destroyed, and uh, if you have a real negative and you don't learn, there is a dump heap that supposedly where people are destroyed that are, have no use. Other ones can stay in a learning in the astral plane, and eventually, whatever happens, we don't know if there's parallel worlds they can go to, but even if this world is destroyed at some <laughs> period of time, you got to remember you're thinking like a human. You know, a day in a, a, a hundred or thousand years in the spirit realm means nothing to them. There's no but, time and space frame. To but them. a dumping ground for souls? Well, of course. There's, uh, there is the destructive part where people that have committed atrocities that do not learn eventually never reincarnate or never learn from it. And also, I was wondering, too, when we come back on Earth, do we have a choice as to where we go, or are we assigned? The theory is you pick exactly what you reincarnate as. And most people that have been uh, recessed and so forth state that they pick that for that particular lesson they need to learn. Right. And also, I was wondering, could Art Bill in a previous life have been a dinosaur? <laughs> <laughs> Trionosaurus Rex, sir, bear it in mind when you call. <laughs> All right, I've uh, got to go. Thank you very much for the calls from Dinosaur. <laughs> <sighs> See, I do this every night. Every every night. Bear that in mind. Uh, line two, you're on the air coast to coast AM with James uh, Templer and Art Bell. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. I've only been listening since 5 o'clock, so I feel like I missed a lot of good stuff, and I'm sorry. You did? I did. <laughs> I probably missed what I wanted to know, but I keep since five o'clock. I noticed that, uh, and I wondered if you noticed this. Uh, whenever it comes to anything spiritual, um, Christians seem to get all undone and afraid, and uh, you know, and the, and they question it and they don't understand it. And my idea of Christ was that He was trying to constantly teach us and. Uh, Impressed by us how spiritual we are. Did you do you get that? Well, ma'am, look. Uh, let me jump in here. Anytime you challenge anybody's belief system, their faith, what they believe to be faith and true, you're going to engender the kind of comments that we've had this morning. People are going to be upset, angry, not at all tolerant, and think you are uh, the heel of the world. But I, but I, you know, I hear him saying and. Uh, that we are spirit. That this is about spiritual stuff, and then um, we're supposed to be spiritual. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's the best part of it. That's what we. That's our true being, is our spiritual side, our worldly side. That's why there's so much concern about I, it. I get all this resistance from people. Yes, of course. About the spiritual stuff. That's because uh, we're questioning some part of their belief system, or, or he is of theirs, one way or the other. Uh, they're challenging each other, and they're at odds. So. I'm sorry I missed I feel like... Well, I'm, I'm sorry you did, too. You can get a copy of this show, and I'll tell you how in a moment. Thank you very much for the call. It's area code if you want a copy of the show. Area code 702-873-3821. 702, the area code, 873-3821. Wildcard Line 3, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Hello, I'm excited. Uh, where are you? Morro Bay, Art. Morro Bay, uh-huh. And uh, do you have a question, sir? And I send good vibrations out to you, my friend. Okay. <laughs> and I wish you t to return those to me, hopefully, with hope and faith. Um, yeah. Uh, the man is... Uh, may I talk to Mr. Trembler? You I'm are. here. Hi. Hello. I'm very interested. I'll be calling your number. Um... I've had some experiences. Um, what happens when you keep running into people that you don't want it to run into, um, and you know invariably the more you try to avoid them, this may be in a town, okay, uh -huh. you run into them? Well, in, in occult terminology, they call that as a cross condition, which means you're, you're somehow you have this negative energy hanging around you, and you have to release it. Yes. Uh, because you draw these people to you, and yes. there are certain people like that. Yes. Uh, that you can be in, in a restaurant somewhere, and if a nut comes in, it'll come right up Amen. to you every place. That's what happened to me, my friend. And uh, I, I personally even went through some of these problems, and you can clean yourself out. And this, this is just this is part of this energy thing that we don't quite understand, and what you try in occult practice is, is to repeat in the positive aspect that person that makes money, as I, I stated before. So there's something hanging around you that uh, draws people in. Otherwise, sir, I'm afraid the term for it that many have used over the years is bad vibes. I've got, right. <laughs> I've got to go, but that that really is correct, isn't it? That's that's right. That's pretty much the uh, the uh, slang. 
hold on just one moment. We'll be right back. First time caller line, you're on the air in Las Vegas with James Templer. Uh, can I give a rebuttal? Uh, I had called, you know, the first time ever. I listened to you for years. Yes, sir. Back. Yes, sir. Okay, if you get it in quickly, because we're almost out of time here. Okay, well, you know, I always hear Christians referred to about the religious bigots and the uh, Jimmy Swaggart type, but I just want to say there's thousands that go out and feed hungry people and help people get off drugs. That's a well-made point. And let's have what do the occultists to... do yeah. for people like that? What kind of good works do they do? Yeah, let me get it. Right, I mean, the, the other caller said the same thing that I didn't recognize. I believe there are good Christians that are doing good work. Oh, good. I don't, I don't condemn all of them. There's good and bad in everything. Just don't shove it down my throat, and uh, I support their freedom to, uh, to operate as, as much as possible. All right. Well, that's not quite peace pipe, but it's close anyway. Uh, line three, you're on the air. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Art. I wanted to ask your guest, uh, does he feel that the Bible personally has been edited down as far as attaining the greatest um, control measures in, in this document? Only 120 times since 1900, yeah. so God knows how many before that. My roommate personally believes there's been so so much forgery in it also. And uh, that's about it, Art. I wanted to ask his opinion on that. All right. Well, you did. Thank you very much for the call. Line one, you're on the air in Las Vegas with uh, James Templer. Serbians of Yugoslavia are, are atheistic communists. They are not Christians. Oh, my. Uh, oh, God. Thank you. Uh, out of state uh, from Jackie Goss Plaza Hotel, you're on the air with James Templer and Art Bell. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> Am I on now? Yes, you are. Is this Art? Yes, it is. Okay, I can barely get you on my radio. I'm in Northern California, Greenview, California. Okay, well, you're on with James Templer as well, uh, and very little time. What's going on? to you uh, four years ago when my little dog was poisoned. Oh, yes, I recall. Okay, uh, I've been through a lot since then, but something really fantastic happened. You suggested on many of your callers following that I get another one. I was afraid to because I was afraid the same thing would happen. Right. Two weeks later, I had a dream uh, about her breed and a puppy and I'd never seen one, a puppy of her breed before yes and through long distance phone calls to the uh, association for her breed uh, I located one got one and the strangest thing she does really unusual things that the other one that was poisoned did yeah, but at, at the very least the same thing has not happened has it ma'am Would you pardon the same thing has not happened has it well she was poisoned but uh, uh, no your new dog Yes, but uh, I got her to a different vet who wasn't related to the people uh, that were behind it, and uh, he saved her. But she did something so fantastic. Oh, well, she's still she's still alive then. Yes, the second one uh, is still alive. All right, I'm sorry, we're flat out of time, Mr. Templer. It's been a pleasure having you on, even though we disagree greatly about many things. Uh, it's nevertheless been informative and riveting. And your your 800 number, if they want to know more about your organization, is 1-800-395-4467, right? Yes, it is. Thanks for having me on, and I welcome coming on again. We'll do it again sometime, Mr. Templer. It's been something else. Have a good morning. You take care, Art. Right. He's a real trooper for sticking it out with us this way. Uh... Thank you all. It has been yet another wonderful week of uh, talk radio. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. We'll be back to do yet uh, a little bit more of it Monday night, Tuesday morning at 1 a.m. Uh, we do that between Monday night, Tuesday morning and Friday night, Saturday morning. Thank you. Uh, have good thoughts, everybody. Good vibes, if you will.